Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook. Hogwarts. I, the strongest Dark Lord in history. Chapter 61. Congratulations to the host for completing a new achievement. Exploring the Ministry of Magic. Rewards. 200 Achievement Points. Prophecy Ball. 1. Under Fudge's leadership, Lucas took a tour of the Ministry of Magic. Although the all-important Department of Mysteries and the underground courtroom is only a cursory glance. But this does not prevent Lucas from getting the achievement. Speaking of the Department of Mysteries, Lucas was very interested. Except the Prophecy Hall, which stores countless prophecy balls. Lucas is also full of curiosity about the time chamber and the mysterious stone door. Pity. These places are highly classified. Temporarily unavailable to visit. Soon, the six shops belonging to the Ministry of Magic came to Lucas. Get the business permits for 15 stores. Lucas led the crowd out of the Ministry of Magic. Mr. Grindelwald, Mr. Malfoy, I'll go back and have the nine shops sorted out. Madam Zabini, please. Mrs. Zabini nodded, and the apparition disappeared. At this moment, Lucas looked at Patriarch Malfoy beside him. How am I qualified to work with the Malfoy family now? Lucius Malfoy raised his eyebrows and stretched out his right hand gracefully. It is an honor for the Malfoy family to be friends with you. The two hands are tightly held together. The two smiled tacitly at the same time. Before parting, Lucas handed over the layout of Nocturne Alley to the Malfoys. After all, the other party is the local snake rooted in the British magic world. Then the black market, the underground auction and the casino will be handed over to you, Mr. Malfoy. Don't worry, I just know that there are a few pieces of land in Nocturne Alley that are vacant, and you should be able to finish it before the next holiday. Lucius Malfoy left his son behind. He went back to Malfoy Manor first. I saw my friend frowning slightly. Lucas joked. What's wrong with our master Della K? Are you worried? Alas. Della Branch sighed. I found that I was very naive before. I never thought about these things before. I thought that as long as my father was at home, I would not be afraid of the dragon coming. Lucas restrained his smile, looked at the people coming and going on the street and said. Della K, if possible, I also hope that someone will stand in front of me and protect me from the wind and rain. Cherish your beautiful childhood, I'm afraid you won't be so leisurely in a few years. Lucas patted Della on the shoulder, and walked away. The Grindelwald estate, Lucas sipped his freshly brewed black tea. In his hand, he was flipping through an encyclopedia of magical creatures. See the introduction to the basilisk above. He pondered the way to deal with the basilisk in his mind. Lucas, are you really going to hand over the Nocturne Alley business to the Malfoys? Know that the underground business will always make more money than the surface. Of course I know, Vita Ant, when the time comes, you arrange some trustworthy people to help. I run underground auctions and trading venues just to collect some weird things. As for the casino, Lucas stopped here, closed the book. He came to the window and looked out at the dark night sky. Vita Ant, have you seen the real face of a gambler? Gambler. Lucas nodded. Gambling is addictive, and sometimes a little bit of greed can make people fall into a situation beyond redemption. Arrange some people to enter the casino. If those gamblers are short of money, lend them. If you encounter dirty work in the future, leave it to those gamblers. The light in Vita's eyes flickered. I understand. Also, what you told me has been done. After saying that, Vita took out a wooden box. Inside the wooden box was a wand broken into three pieces. Lucas just glanced at it, then asked, where's the man? Broken limbs, broken spine, even street. Mungos will take months to recover. Oh, poor Pierce. I had someone pretend to be an alcoholic. I got into a conflict with Pierce on the way home. I pretended to have injured him by mistake. No one should suspect it. Hear Vita's words. Lucas laughed and said, he just got into trouble with me during the day and met a drunkard at night. This is too coincidental. It's okay, even if they suspect, there is no evidence, let those who did the work go back to Nurmengard to take care of father. Vita nodded, turned and walked out of the room to make arrangements. Lucas took a deep breath and looked out the window at the night sky again. Pierce thicknesses, you are really troublesome. If you hadn't worried about Fudge's fear of repentance, you would not have such a good life today. The next day, King's Cross Station. Lucas is still traveling light. 
Watching Hermione rushing up, Lucas greeted him immediately. Miss Chu Zhang, long time no see. After accepting Hermione's salute, Lucas greeted Chu Zhang who came next to him. Long time no see, only three days. After Chu Zhang finished speaking, he handed his salute to Lucas. She followed Hermione to the train. Lucas shrugged and followed the two onto the Hogwarts Express. After hours of running around, the little wizards who returned home from vacation finally returned to Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Send the two girls back to the Ra and Karao Tower. Lucas also returned to the Slytherin Lounge. Just when he was about to continue looking through the Encyclopedia of Magical Creatures. The door of the living room was suddenly opened. Delico ran in anxiously, pulled Lucas up and walked out without saying anything. Judging from his appearance, it seemed that something serious had happened. Even if the matter is urgent, you still need to tell me what happened first. Outside the Slytherin break room, Lucas followed Delico suspiciously. Hurry up, there's no rush if you're late. What's the hurry? Dragon, the Norwegian Ridgeback is about to break its shell. Lucas shook off Delico's hand and stopped his steps. If it's watching a big lizard break its shell, then I'm not interested. Hey, that's rude of you, that's a dragon, not a lizard. For Lucas describing the dragon as a lizard, Della Branch expressed great dissatisfaction. Just when he was planning to correct the other party's wrong thinking. Finding that Lucas, who was about to go back, stopped. What's wrong? Nothing, I just thought you'd cause trouble if you went alone, and that dragon was too dangerous at school. Then what do you mean? Lucas didn't continue to answer, but turned around and walked towards the exit of the basement. Seeing him like this, Della couldn't understand. Wait for me, I'll show you the way. Lucas wasn't that kind. He just thought that Harry and the others would be punished to patrol the Forbidden Forest because of this incident. Such a great opportunity. Of course Lucas didn't want to miss it. The Forbidden Forest is a great place. Inside are countless herbs and hundreds of magical creatures. It is simply a super big treasure chest containing countless treasures. Besides, he still has the achievement of exploring the Forbidden Forest to complete. To this end, Lucas also specifically called Hermione out. In the original, several people found Delicate peeking out the window. Worried that Hagrid's secret of raising the dragon would be exposed, he had no choice but to send it away. But now Delico obviously won't do that. Then it's up to Lucas and Hermione to do the persuasion. The three came outside the castle and successfully joined Harry and Mr. Weasley. I saw Lucas coming towards me. 30. Ron subconsciously dodged backwards. Although there was no evidence, Ron's intuition told him. Last flying lesson, it was Lucas who put a spell on his broom. As a result, he lay in the infirmary for a day, and had to endure the pain of bone healing. Harry, they're here anyway. I saw the unhappy expression of my friend. Harry smiled and comforted. Come on, Lucas is Della and my friend. While speaking, the three of Lucas had already walked in front of Harry. Saw Ron Weasley's disgusted expression. Lucas frowned. Mr. Ron Weasley, is your injury healed? Be careful in the future, broomsticks are also very dangerous. You, seeing Ron's flushed face, Della covered his mouth and snickered. While Harry kept smoothing things over and making jokes, the atmosphere on both sides became much more relaxed. Several people walked towards the edge of the Forbidden Forest together. On the way, Harry mentioned the special gift he received during the Christmas holiday, the invisibility cloak and about his suspicions about Snape. I was standing next to Snape that day, he couldn't see me because of the invisibility cloak, but I could hear him clearly, he was threatening Professor Quirrell. Harry, Dean Snape is a professor of the school, he will not do anything that harms the interests of the school. Lucas couldn't help reminding the other party. But the stubborn Harry decided that Snape was the villain. No, Snape was too suspicious, and then I went out again at night, at the door of an empty classroom, and heard Professor Quirrell's cry from inside. He must have been unable to withstand Snape's torture, so he surrendered. Harry had just finished speaking. Ron went on to say, the last Quidditch match, Snape cursed Harry. He looked specifically at Lucas and Delico as he said this. There is also a hint of gloating on the expression. Reminded by Ron, Hermione and the others also remembered what had happened on the Quidditch pitch. 
So, Professor Snape was indeed suspicious, and it couldn't be a coincidence that Harry's broom immediately stabilized when we ignited his robes. Hermione looked at Lucas beside her after speaking. Want to hear his opinion. Lucas, on the other hand, looked at Della. He'd heard that Professor Snape was also responsible for burning Professor Snape's robes that day. I, I don't really dare to believe it, but it is indeed a bit suspicious. When Delic said this sentence, his expression was very tangled. Merlin, Delico Malfoy, Snape and your father are good friends, is it really okay for you to doubt him so much? I complained silently in my heart. Lucas gave ambiguous answers. I reserve my opinion, sometimes those who look bad, actually have a very delicate heart. And those guys who seem harmless to humans and animals, maybe they are murderous demons behind their backs. As soon as he finished speaking, Ron Weasley made fun of him. Oh, Mr. Grindelwald is very kind, you look quite harmless. Fortunately, at this time, everyone had already arrived outside Hagrid's hut. See Hagrid open the door. Everyone tacitly stopped talking about Snape. Oh, you're here, come quickly, the little dragon is about to break its shell. For the arrival of everyone, Hagrid was very happy. This big man with a height of more than three meters likes dangerous creatures very much. He also called those dangerous creatures cuties. It's right to think about it carefully. For his size, most dangerous creatures are cuties. Invite people to their seats. Hagrid looked at Lucas and Hermione and asked, are you new friends? Hagrid, this is Lucas, and beside him is Miss Hermione Granger. Oh, Hagrid's eyes widened in surprise. Are you Lucas Grindelwald? See Lucas nod. Hagrid smiled and said, I've heard of you, or everyone at school has heard of you. Dumbledore also said, you are a very interesting little guy, nice to meet you, my name is Rubius Hagrid, gamekeeper. After introducing each other. Hagrid couldn't wait to walk to the fireplace. A dragon egg the size of a football is stored there. Look, the little guy is about to break his shell. Everyone immediately stepped forward to stare at the dragon eggs that kept moving on the table. Accompanied by a crisp sound. A crack appeared at the top of the dragon egg. Just when everyone was about to exclaim. A small, ferocious dragon head broke out of the shell. Oh, the little guy is out, mom is so happy. Come on, crawl out of this eggshell hard. Lucas frowned, looking at Hagrid with distaste. He really couldn't stand a strong man three meters tall exuding maternal love for a palm-sized baby dragon. Even, see baby dragons fully emerging from their eggs. The strong man also showed a look of crying with joy. Merlin, come and take this monster away. Thankfully the sensual Hagrid only lasted a short time. Soon he turned back to the old rough guy. Look at the Norwegian Ridgeback in the palm of your hand. It was as if Hagrid saw a rare treasure. Hagrid, let's see it too. Della K stood on tiptoe and looked up at the opponent's palm. Hagrid smiled shyly and put the baby dragon on the round table. Merlin, it's so beautiful. How big do you think it can grow? What a beautiful cutie. The reactions of the three of Harry made Hagrid very happy. This strong man with half titan blood is really innocent sometimes stupid. Lucas and Hermione looked helplessly at the few people who had fallen into obsession. Listen to what they said. Cutie. This little cutie was able to swallow their heads in one gulp after a month. This little cutie can start a monstrous fire with just a breath of dragon breath. I saw a few people still commenting on the young dragon. Lucas coughed deliberately. Let me tell you a few, should we give this young dragon a name? Several people suddenly realized. Delico looked at the baby dragon and said, how about calling it, Duke? I've been thinking about that name for a long time. No, Harry shook his head, I think, Locke, is fine. Obviously, this name is not recognized by everyone. Then Ron and Hermione had a few more conversations. But they are all popular names. It is worth mentioning that Hermione named several of them. Also includes, Crookshanks. It seems she has wanted a pet for a long time. As the master of the young dragon, Hagrid vetoed everyone's name. He thought hard for a long time, and finally said the representative name, Noble. Lucas saw several people around the young dragon yelling, Noble, and, Noble. He patted his forehead helplessly. Della K, are you reading all those books for nothing? This Norwegian Ridgeback is obviously a female dragon, and the name Norber is not suitable for her. 
Hear what Lucas said. Hagrid immediately held the baby dragon in his hand to observe. Finally had to admit that Lucas was right. I saw a few people falling into the trouble of naming again. Lucas sighed, how about calling her, Nobeta? Congratulations to the host for completing the new achievement. Dragon and Elf, reward, 20 achievement points. The baby dragon seems to like the name Lucas took. She let out a dragon cry, and crawled along the elf breath on Lucas. The issue of names is resolved. The rest is to discuss the fate of the young dragon. Hear Lucas say to send Nobeta away. Hagrid hastily shook his head and refused to agree. Even though Norbeta burned his beard with a breath of the dragon, Hagrid did not put the dragon down. The same goes for Harry and others, who felt that it was too cruel to send the newborn Norberta into the wild. Hey, you have to understand that the Ministry of Magic has a clear regulation that no teacher is allowed to raise Dragon 050 without permission. If found out, Hagrid may have to leave Hogwarts forever. Lucas's words made several people frown. Seeing a few people talking, Hermione immediately understood what they were thinking. Don't take chances. It only takes one month for Nobeta to grow bigger than this house. At that time, what are you going to do with her? Get her up. Oh no, Nobeta, mother can't bear you. Hagrid cried bitterly while hugging the baby dragon. Lucas's eardrums hurt from his crying. Lucas turned his head to the window, trying to distract himself. Coincidentally, there was a human face looking inward by the window. Who? Hearing Lucas yelling, the people outside the house immediately fled to the distance. Look at that far. Go figure. Della Kay frowned. Oops, it's Angus Selwyn, my sworn enemy, he will definitely tell the professors about Norberta. Why? Lucas stood up from his seat. He said in an irresistible tone, Hagrid, Norberta must be sent away, otherwise you will be in danger. Lucas applauded the Selwyn boy in his heart. The opponent appeared in time. For fear of Selwyn's whistleblowing, Hagrid was forced to agree to send Norberta away. But where to send it became a problem. I can't find a place to throw it in the wild. Lucas actually knew the solution. But with the relationship between him and Ron, it is really impossible to say it. So he reminded him on the sidelines, it would be great if someone had the permission to raise dragons. Charlie. Ron's big brother Charlie Weasley raises dragons in Romania. Mr. Harry, the witty Mr. Potter, was quick to respond. When everyone heard his words, Sunset looked at Ron. Ron, who was in the spotlight for the first time, immediately patted his chest and made a promise to Hagrid. On the way back to the dormitory, the three of Harry were still chatting about dragons. I noticed that the eyes of the characters in the portrait looked at me and the others vaguely. Lucas knows. Dumbledore should have known by now that his savior boy was in danger. So, is Dumbledore involved in this matter? Lucas put the question to the back of his mind for a moment. All he needs to do is follow Harry and the others. Then he was fined and sent to the Forbidden Forest. Noseless socket, we will meet again soon. The reply from Charlie Weasley came sooner than expected. In the letter, the other party praised his younger brother Ron for his correct decision. Then tell everyone. A week later, on Saturday night, he asked his friends to wait on the top floor of the Hogwarts Tower. Only wizards who have attended Hogwarts. No stranger to towers. That's where astronomy classes are held. Next week. For Harry, the three were happy. Because they can go to Hagrid's hut to play with the baby dragon Nobeta every day. Lucas is still the same. The emeralds in the Slytherin hourglass have increased a lot. Little wizards from other colleges. Every time it passes by the hourglass will show a frustrated expression. Everyone seems to have decided that this year's Academy Cup will continue to be won by Slytherin. The only one who might feel pain is Miss Hermione. Oh, Merlin, why does a week take so long? You don't know how painful it is to keep secrets in fear every day. Hermione frowned and complained to Lucas beside her. These days she was always worried that Hagrid's dragon would cause trouble. Fortunately, finally came the day to send the dragon away. Lucas took the little witch's hand and motioned for her to sit beside her. Relax, nothing happened this week. It should be said that nothing happened. Have you visited the dragon this week? See Lucas shake his head. Hermione said angrily, she's grown to the size of a wooden box, and it's only been a week, Merlin. Lucas, who has never been interested in dragons. He was taken aback after hearing Hermione's description. Grow so fast. 
The second reaction is to think of the phrase, every dragon is full of treasures. If Professor Snape knew about this, the poor baby dragon would probably be dismembered. What? What does it have to do with Professor Snape? Nothing. Night fell imperceptibly. When the appointed time came, Lucas and Delic left the lounge together. Not long after the two left, another thin figure left from the lounge. Lucas didn't pull out the little mouse behind him. On the contrary, can everyone be arrested tonight, and can they go to the Forbidden Forest as they wish? We all need the help of this little mouse. Lucas looked beside him and shook his head helplessly. Since dinner, Della has been absent-minded. When he first came to school, Della was not so reluctant to his parents. The two first came to the Ron Corral Tower. Hermione has been waiting here for a long time. You guys are so late, where are Mr. Potter and Mr. Weasley? The two of them are responsible for bringing Nobeta to the top of the tower, let's go first. Because Hagrid's size is too conspicuous, it is not suitable for such a covert operation. So he could only stay in his hut and grieve alone. The scenery tonight is very beautiful, with a bright moon in the sky and stars surrounding it. Lucas stood shoulder to shoulder with Hermione, looking up at the stars. It's so beautiful. If I draw this astronomical picture, Professor Sinistra will be willing to give me a zero. Beautiful lady, please don't talk about spoiling the fun under such a beautiful scenery. Lucas looked helplessly at Miss Know-it-all beside him. Is she allergic to romance? Hermione smiled mischievously. She herself felt incredible. With such a beautiful scenery, the first thing she thought of was astronomy homework. Hermione took the blonde boy's hand and said, Sorry sir, I won't do it next time. Delicious food released by the two unconsciously. Let Della Kay behind him eat his fill. He looked towards the entrance to the top of the tower several times, complaining why Harry had come so late. This box is really heavy. Ron complained from the entrance. Immediately afterwards, figures of Harry and Ron suddenly appeared on the top of the tower. Compared to Della Branch rushing directly to the wooden box. Lucas looked at the invisibility cloak falling from the ground. Harry, can I see your invisibility cloak? Certainly. Harry picked up the invisibility cloak and placed it in Lucas's hand. The first reaction to the invisibility cloak is that it is light, very light in weight. Lucas strokes the fabric carefully. Definitely something that is not currently on the market. Or something that he has never seen in his cognition. Worthy of being one of the Deathly Hallows. It is detected that the host is holding an invisibility cloak, and a series of achievements will be opened. Three Deathly Hallows, collect three complete and undamaged Deathly Hallows, and you will get a chance to draw diamonds once. Note. The collection referred to here requires the Deathly Hallows to recognize the host as the master, so that it can be considered as an effective collection. Lucas frowned, and returned the cloak to Harry. This is yet another long-running series achievement that took time to complete. At the very least, the early stage is absolutely impossible to complete. Charlie Weasley's friends finally made it to the top of the tower. I saw this big brother flying from a distant swaggering on a broom. Lucas confirmed his thoughts even more. Without Dumbledore's permission. It would be hell if outsiders could come in like this. Give the wooden box to the opponent. Under the reluctant eyes of Harry and others, Charlie's friend flew towards the moon. The young dragon was sent away. The three of Harry seemed to have lost their beloved treasure. Along the way, no one spoke. Lucas stopped when he passed the bathroom on the first floor. What's wrong? Hermione asked softly. The eyes of other people followed suit. Lucas shook his head. It's nothing, I just heard from the seniors that there is a very interesting ghost in this semi-abandoned girl's bathroom. You mean moaning Myrtle? Hermione immediately thought who Lucas was talking about. Others looked confused. Wait too, who is moaning Myrtle? I, I am moaning Myrtle. A roar came from the side. A ghost wearing the wizard robes of Ron Claw emerges from the wall. She circled around the crowd. Approaching Lucas shyly. Hi, can you tell me your name? Lucas Grindelwald, nice to meet you. Hermione turned her head slightly displeased. She also doesn't know why she would eat a ghost's vinegar. Oh, Grindelwald Grindelwald. Myrtle said Lucas's last name as she spun around. Sudden, her expression froze, she looked at Lucas in horror and shouted, Grindelwald. See Lucas nod. Myrtle immediately went back to her bathroom. 
Immediately afterwards, everyone heard the sound of heavy objects falling into the water. Others don't understand what's going on. Lucas knew it in his heart. Myrtle died in a bathroom in 1946. Grindelwald lost the duel to Dumbledore in 1945. That is to say, Myrtle has seen or heard about the Grindelwald ravaging Europe. What's wrong with her? It's okay, maybe I suddenly remembered something else. Lucas looked back at Harry after answering Hermione's question. Have you heard any strange noises lately? Strange sound. Harry thought about it carefully, then shook his head in denial. Everyone continued to move forward. Lucas glanced back at the bathroom. The exploration achievements of the four colleges are always unfinished. He was wondering whether to go in and get the achievement points while the basilisk was still sleeping. But he doesn't speak Parseltongue. Lucas frowned slightly, and finally decided to find time to try it out. Maybe learning the pronunciation in the movie can open the secret room. Lucas, did you hear what I said? Hear Harry's voice. Lucas came back to himself immediately. What? I want to ask you, do you know who Nicole Flamel is? Lucas turned to look at Delico, didn't you see the Christmas present I gave you? Della shook his head embarrassingly. In fact, I was watching, Guide to Raising Dragons, during the holidays. Although expected, but Lucas couldn't help but glared at him. It's recorded in the, Compendium of Famous Wizards of Modern Times, that I sent to Della Branch. Nicole Flamel, the alchemist in the 14th century, the creator of the Philosopher's Stone, has lived to be more than 600 years old. Oh Merlin's beard, over 600 years old. Ron was marveling at the other's age. And Harry noticed the Philosopher's Stone mentioned by Lucas. Backquote Sorcerer's Stone, Snape must want to get the Sorcerer's Stone. Harry ignored everyone's doubts. Talk to yourself about the cause and effect. During the Christmas holiday, I used the invisibility cloak to travel at night. At that time, I met Snape who was threatening Professor Quirrell. Later, Professor Quirrell hid in the empty classroom and cried. We already know that Harry. Ron reminded. Later, I went to the corridor on the fourth floor. Guess where I saw what? Everyone shook their heads. I have a trap door under the feet of a huge king dog with three heads. I couldn't figure out what the three-headed dog was guarding until Lucas mentioned the Philosopher's Stone. Before school started, when Hagrid and I went to Gringotts, Hagrid took something and said it was a task assigned by Dumbledore. That thing must be the Sorcerer's Stone. Even I saw Snape's bitten leg, he must have been trying to get in the trapdoor and got bitten by the three-headed dog. Perhaps, even the mysterious man who broke into Gringotts was dressed up by Snape. The purpose of everything is the Philosopher's Stone that can make people live forever. Clap clap. Lucas couldn't help applauding Harry. Good guy, this analysis is exactly the same as Dumbledore's design. Dumbledore was probably too happy to sleep at this moment. His savior displayed extraordinary talents in front of everyone. Wait until Quirrell is defeated. The character of the savior is completely tied to Harry. But, just poor Professor Snape. But if you want to come, the other party won't mind. Who let the person who wronged him have a pair of beautiful green eyes? Merlin. It's unbelievable, Wong Qianhao. Five people, five little wizards wandering around the castle without sleeping at night. As soon as everyone reached the fork in the road, they heard Professor McGonagall's voice from ahead. Professor McGonagall looked very angry. Only Lucas noticed that the other party seemed to be waiting for them here. When I received the report letter, I couldn't believe it. I didn't expect it to be true. You are violating. Against school rules. I am so disappointed in you, Mr. Potter, Mr. Weasley, 20 points from Gryffindor, 20 points from each of you. Others did not escape the fate of being deducted points. Professor McGonagall looked at Lucas and said, Mr. Grindelwald, I always thought you were a steady and good student, but you are messing around with them. I'll deduct 40 points from Slytherin House, 20 points from you and Mr. Malfoy. Professor McGonagall turned to Hermione one last time. The brave Miss Granger of yore has been hiding behind Lucas. She was like a good student who made a mistake for the first time and was caught, she was too shy to face it. Miss Granger, I need to remind you that you are a lady and it is very dangerous to leave Loen Keluo at night, so 20 points will be deducted. Come on, man. Professor McGonagall killed his neighbors. A few words, a total of 100 points for a college. 
This made everyone except Lucas bow their heads in shame. Professor McGonagall's stern gaze swept over the five of them. In addition, you will patrol the Forbidden Forest under the leadership of the gamekeeper Hagrid. This is a punishment for your violation of school rules. Lucas's eyes lit up. The opportunity he's been waiting for has finally come. The Forbidden Forest, also known as the Dark Forest. On the edge of Hogwarts. The Forbidden Forest is under the jurisdiction of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. But with the development of Muggle technology, the living environment of magical creatures is constantly being compressed. More and more magical creatures have migrated here. To this day, Hogwarts has been unable to manage most of the Forbidden Forest. Lucas and others stood beside the Forbidden Forest, listening to Hermione recite the contents of the book, looking at the nervousness of several people. Hagrid said with a smile, don't be nervous, actually the Forbidden Forest is not that scary, the magical animals inside are very friendly. That's just for you, Lucas thought silently in his heart. Think of the countless eight-eyed spiders in the Forbidden Forest. It's just that he feels a little headache. Okay, now let's group first. Hagrid walked up to them with an oil lamp in his hand. Seeing Lucas and Hermione close together, he said understandingly. Lucas is with Hermione, Mr. Lucas, you must protect Miss Hermione. After saying that, Hagrid winked at Lucas. Ron is with me, Harry is with Della, do you have any ideas? Ron nodded as he looked at the dark forbidden forest. Looking at his appearance, he seemed very scared. Delake looked at the Neapolitan Mastiff aside, our group needs Yaya. Hagrid shrugged in agreement, but I need to remind you that Yaya is a coward. As soon as these words came out, Yaya got everyone's attention. The big, docile dog tilted his head. I don't understand why everyone is looking at me. Everyone is ready to go. Led into the Forbidden Forest by Hagrid. A few weeks ago, a unicorn was killed in the Forbidden Forest. Our mission is to patrol to see if other unicorns are injured. If you are in danger, remember to use your wands to send a signal to the sky, and I will rush to you as soon as possible. The road to the Forbidden Forest is not easy. While explaining the task, Hagrid held up the oil to illuminate the crowd. Wait until you come to a fork in the road. Hagrid pointed to the three roads and said, Let's choose one road for each group, and just patrol around, don't go too deep, understand? Why? Ron asked, puzzled. Ah, a deep and long wolf howl answered his question. Hagrid whispered mysteriously, There are not only werewolves in this forest, there are many, many unknown creatures, so you must listen to me. Seeing several little wizards nodded in fright. Hagrid's mood, which had been depressed because of the dragon's departure, was much better. Lucas wasn't about to waste time. Taking Hermione's hand, he chose a random path and walked in. Just enter the cul-de-sac. It became extremely dark all around. Feel the strength coming from the palm. Lucas drew out his wand and pointed forward, the stars are twinkling. Countless white light spots flew out from the tip of the wand. These dots of light float in midair, illuminating the surroundings brightly. Merlin, it's so beautiful, what is this magic spell? The improved version of fluorescent flashes, I will teach you when I go back. Lucas, you are a genius. Hermione looked at the dots of light around her, and her nervousness gradually eased. The two continued to walk forward under the starlight ring. Soon, they came to an open field. Moonlight shone in through the trees. Looking at Hermione standing under the moon, Lucas took out the guardian heart. What a beautiful sapphire necklace. Like it. Hermione nodded. Lucas came behind her and put the protective heart on her. This, this is too precious. Don't take it off if you like it, this is a gift for you. Hermione looked at Lucas seriously. Biting his lower lip lightly, he made a very important decision. Close your eyes. Lucas raised his eyebrows and closed his eyes under the other's shy gaze. The soft lips came up suddenly. Before Lucas could react, Hermione quickly backed away. Let's go, or Hagrid's task will not be completed. The little witch lowered her head and walked forward quickly, DACF. It's like Lucas behind him is some kind of scourge. Congratulations to the host for completing the new achievement. Kiss of love, reward, 500 achievement points. Ron followed Hagrid cautiously. The two came to a bush. Hagrid stopped abruptly. Oh that sucks. Come see what we found. 
He knelt down and ran his fingers across a puddle of silvery liquid. Hi, Hagrid, what is this? Unicorn blood, it seems that another unicorn has been injured, we need to find it quickly. Ron looked at the metal-like blood on the ground, and his voice became a little angry. What hurt the unicorn then? I don't know, maybe it's other creatures, maybe it's people, but the blood of unicorns can bring people back to life. But if you drink its blood, you will also be cursed, and you will be in the pain of the curse for the rest of your life. A few words from Hagrid. It made Ron's heart even more frightened. He tremblingly followed Hagrid into the depths of the Forbidden Forest. Just when Hagrid and the others were struggling to find the unicorn. Lucas and Hermione were staring blankly at the creature in front of them. This is a gold pony. Lucas recognized it at a glance, it was a unicorn cub. The unicorn is a magical creature that is pure gold in its infancy and has no horns on its head. At about two years of age, the skin turns silver. They don't start growing horns until they are four years old. It's not until they reach adulthood at the age of seven that their skin turns snow white and the signature horn on their foreheads is fully grown. Lucas tells Hermione what he knows then quietly backed away. In legendary, unicorns like to be close to women with pure hearts. Really, not long after he stepped back, the little unicorn came to Hermione with graceful steps. Merlin, can I touch you? The little unicorn nodded slightly. Hermione dared to reach out and touch him. Hey Lucas, I found the unicorn, it's so cute. The little witch is full of joy. Even Lucas, who is a little far away, can clearly feel it. But soon Hermione became sad. Hermione, what's the matter with you? It's okay, I just feel its emotions, the little unicorn is very sad. The little witch looked at her boyfriend helplessly. Lucas stepped forward and stroked the little unicorn's forehead. Perceived that he was not malicious. The little unicorn didn't dodge. A feeling of sadness welled up in my heart. Lucas probably understood what was going on in his heart. Something happened to its mother. Suddenly a strange voice came from the shadows of the forest. A centaur stepped out of the darkness. Hello, little wizard, my name is Ronan. Lucas and Hermione saluted each other. Hermione looked at the unicorn cub and said, Mr. Ronan, you said something happened to its mother. Was it hunted? That's right. Ronan nodded. He looked into the sky and murmured, Mars is bright tonight. Little wizard, you should go back, the forbidden forest is very dangerous. Just as he was talking, a centaur appeared from the darkness. Bane, have you found that guy? The new centaur is much stronger than Ronan. The other party shook his head. Apparently, they were also looking for the guy who hunted the unicorns. At the same time, Della and Harry also walked deep along the forest path. Both of them were not timid, talking and laughing along the way. What's more interesting is that Master Malfoy always needs others to serve him on weekdays. At this moment, he was holding an oil lamp, leading the way for Harry Potter. The two had just walked through the tangled woods. Yaya, who was walking ahead, stopped. What's the matter, Tooth? Just when Harry was about to squat down and ask. Della pulled his robe and said, Front, look ahead. Harry looked up, and what he saw was a unicorn lying on the ground. Next to the unicorn, there is still a humanoid creature lying on its stomach, but the other person is covered by a black robe and cannot see clearly. Harry, run away. The two turned and ran back. Harry accidentally tripped over a tree root, looking at the black shadow floating towards him. Harry was terrified inside. At the same time, he also felt a burning pain on his forehead. The pain made Harry's vision blurry. He reluctantly backed away, hoping to avoid the attack of the shadow. Come on, Hagrid, Lucas, come on. Wow, wow, and Yaya's voice spread far away. At the same time, a red spark flew into the sky. Lucas, who was looking after the little unicorn, saw the sky mark first. No, someone has an accident. Lucas took Hermione's hand and rushed towards the direction of the voice. The little unicorn hesitated for a moment, then ran after the two of them. Others may not understand what happened, but Lucas knew that Harry must have met Voldemort but he wasn't worried. At this moment Voldemort really wasn't necessarily Harry's opponent. He came to suck the blood of the unicorn, which proved to be extremely weak. Wait for Lucas and Hermione to arrive. Hagrid and Ron also happened to be running from afar. Seeing Harry sitting on the ground, 
several people rushed forward to comfort him. Thank you very much for your help, Firenze. Hagrid came to the centaur to thank him. This Mr. Firenze will be the proportion professor at Hogwarts in the future. In fact, every centaur has the ability to account. Wait until Hagrid introduces a few people to Firenze. Everyone asked Harry what happened just now. Harry said exactly what he saw. But he withheld Firenze's words. Because what the other party said was too unbelievable. Firenze actually said that the man in black robe floating around was Voldemort. Harry, who always thought Voldemort was dead, couldn't believe it. Harry, where's the Della family? Hear Lucas's question. Harry looked around quickly. The Della family, which should have been behind him, has disappeared. Only Fangya was left squatting there. Hagrid's expression immediately became tense. The Forbidden Forest at this time is very dangerous. They must find the Della family quickly, or there is a good chance that a... Uh, it's unexpected. Hermione, you guys go together to find it, and I'll go the other way alone. Firenze, please help your centaur tribe find a platinum-haired boy, we are grateful. Lucas quickly said to everyone. After several people agreed, he drew out his wand and walked towards a certain direction where Delico disappeared. Della shook his head as he awoke from a coma. He remembered that Harry was in danger. He shouted to the surroundings for help. Seeing that no one came, he planned to go back to rescue Harry. Just as he drew his wand, it seemed to be pulled by something behind him. Then a huge force pulled him and flew backwards. In the process, he seemed to hit a tree trunk and passed out. Hiss. Della K held the back of his head and sucked in a breath of cool air. He looked around. Find yourself in a cave. Just as he got up and was about to find his way to leave. Suddenly, I heard rustling sounds from all around. Immediately afterwards, countless tire-sized spiders appeared in front of Delico. Without waiting for him to scream, a deep voice came from the depths of the cave. Oh, 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 welcome, little wizard. The voice just fell. A huge eight-eyed spider crawled out from the depths. Della swallowed nervously. Responding quickly, he drew out his wand and pointed it at the other party. Little wizard, don't be nervous, where are you from? Acromantula asked Della in a gentle tone. I am a student of Slytherin House. Oh, Slytherin. Della Branch didn't notice. When he said he was from Slytherin House. A cold light flashed through the eyes of the giant Acromantula. The Acromantula is called Aragog. The name was also given by Hagrid for it. Yep, it's that guy Hagrid's pet again. Because of something that happened 50 years ago. Aragog has a strong hostility towards the Slytherins. These are things that Della Branch doesn't know. After he saw that the giant spider in front of him could communicate. Immediately began to recall the content of the book, Monsters and Their Origins, in my mind. Hope to find a way to deal with giant spiders. After a minute or so. Della Branch suddenly made a strange movement. This is the action that eight-eyed spiders do when communicating and saluting. Really, the eight-eyed spiders in the cave all made the same gesture. Seeing this, Della was relieved. Dear Mr. Spider, I'm sorry to bother you, but I've already appeared here when I woke up. If you are willing to let me go, the Malfoy family will express their sincerest thanks and the richest gift to you. No, I don't want any thank you let alone the Malfoy family. Delico's heart sank at Aragog's answer. See the spiders gradually shrinking the encirclement. A drop of cold sweat slipped down Delico's forehead. Dear Mr. Spider, what do you need? As long as our Malfoy family can do it, you can ask for it. Della Branch was speaking at the same time. Eyes are looking for the hope of escape. But there are spiders everywhere, even the top of the cave is covered. Aragog saw through Delico's little trick, and laughed softly. Little wizard, I have lived in this forest for fifty years. I promised Hagrid that my children and I would not take the initiative to go out of the forest to hunt. However, I never said that I would let off the prey that intruded into my territory. My children have been hungry for a long time, little wizard. Looking at the spider swarm approaching him, Della Branch immediately pointed his wand at the ground. Fire. The raging flames immediately surrounded him, and the surrounding spiders retreated one after another. Delico gets a brief respite. Dear Mr. Spider, the Hagrid you are talking about is Rubius Hagrid, that half-blood titan. That's right. Oh Merlin, that's great, I'm friends with Hagrid, 
He's nearby, if you don't believe me I can find him. Della Branch seems to see hope. Little did he know that what greeted him was complete despair. Little wizard, you shouldn't mention Hagrid's name. Although I ordered my children not to hurt him, you don't naively think that I will obey his order and let you go. Oh, I've said enough, my children are hungry, and since you said Hagrid was nearby, I can't waste my time. Aragog let out a hum when he finished speaking. This is the unique language of spiders. The little spiders around became irritable. Facing the little spiders rushing towards him one after another. Della waved her wand again and again, torn apart. Bones to pieces. Stupid. Wulong out of the hole. Fire. Quote quote. Look at the spiders that can't be killed. Della suddenly felt remorse in his heart. If you learn more spells on weekdays. It will not become helpless in times of crisis. Whether it's a splitting spell or a crushing spell. It's fine against a single spider. But he faced too many spiders. Too many to count. The surrounding flames gradually became smaller. It won't be long before the flame goes out. Della Branch knows. When the flame is extinguished, it is the time of his own death. Call. A breeze blew through the cave. The last flame was completely extinguished. Della Branch put down the wand in his hand, as if intending to give up resistance. The end of life. He thought of his good friends Lucas, Pansy Parkinson, Buris Zabini. I also thought of the professors at school. Finally, I thought of my parents at home. What are the parents doing at this moment? If you know the news of your death, your parents should be very sad, right? In the end, he thought of Harry. He didn't know if Harry was out of danger or not. Della Branch looked around, and countless spiders swarmed. It turns out that this is the feeling of dying. Delico found himself hallucinating in front of his eyes. He actually saw an elegant black panther among a group of spiders. Ah, the panther's roar shook off the little spiders around. Delico rubbed his eyes. All this is not an illusion. In front of him, a black panther really appeared. Hogwarts Castle. Professor McGonagall walked into the principal's office with a nervous expression on his face. Professor Dumbledore, something serious happened. Dumbledore, who was reading a book, looked at him puzzled. Only then did I find out. Behind Professor McGonagall were Professors Flitwick, Sprout, and Snape. The presence of the deans of the four colleges made Dumbledore even more curious. Calm down Minerva, what the hell happened? Hagrid has word that they have found unicorn poachers in the Forbidden Forest. Dumbledore nodded slightly, not only did he know there were poachers. Also know who is hunting unicorns. Tonight he punished Harry and others to go to the Forbidden Forest. He just hoped that Harry could learn the news that Voldemort was not dead through the mouth of the centaur. In this way, when he faced Quirrell, he would not be frightened by Voldemort's sudden appearance. And then, what happened? Della Malfoy is missing, he's gone missing in the Forbidden Forest. Snape went straight to the point. Upon hearing his words, Dumbledore stood up from his seat immediately. What? Dumbledore looked very surprised. This was clearly not what he had planned. The status of the Malfoy family in the British wizarding world is not ordinary. Many officials of the Ministry of Magic have a close relationship with Lucius Malfoy. And the Malfoy family is also one of the trustees of Hogwarts. In the case of Delico Malfoy, something happened to the future heir of the Malfoy family. That would be really bad. We meet at the entrance of the Forbidden Forest. Dumbledore looked aside at Phoenix Fox. Accompanied by a Phoenix cry. He and Fox disappeared into the firelight. Hogwarts school can't apparate, but it can't stop the phoenix from teleporting. Entrance to the Forbidden Forest. Hagrid, who had already received the news, was waiting here with a few young wizards. Flames flickered. Dumbledore's figure appeared. Hagrid, how's the situation? Hagrid shook his head and said, We have searched around the accident site, but there is still no sign of Delico Malfoy. And, Hagrid hesitated for a moment, then continued under Dumbledore's gaze. And Lucas Grindelwald, who went looking for Malfoy, is gone. Principal Dumbledore, please find a way to find them both. Hermione said anxiously. She hadn't thought about it at all, and got drunk at Shiwe Hospital. Harry also had an anxious expression on his face, and as for Ron, it was considered polite not to snicker. Dumbledore reassured everyone. When he heard that Lucas Grindelwald was also missing. For some reason, my heart suddenly relaxed a lot.
This is very strange. In this time of crisis, Dumbledore chose to believe the cunning blonde boy. Don't worry, I'll go in now to find their whereabouts. Hagrid, wait a moment, the other four deans will come and tell them what you know. Got a reply from Hagrid. Dumbledore glanced at forks in the sky. Under the leadership of the opponent, his figure quickly disappeared into the forbidden forest. Ah, the panther roared again. Then it changed back to human form under Della's astonished eyes. Lucas, see friends appear in front of you. A tear appeared in Della's eyes. Look who is crying. Oh, it's our master Malfoy. Peeves should really show you. I believe that with its help, the whole school will know how embarrassing you are tomorrow. Lucas's teasing succeeded in provoking Della's anger. Seeing the other party's pale face return to Rosie. Only then did he look at the giant eight-eyed spider in the distance. Oh, I'm so lucky today, some prey came to my door on my own initiative. Huh, I thought who it was. It turned out to be you, an ugly guy. How come you, who only dared to hide in Tibet 50 years ago, are you in the forbidden forest now? Lucas looked at the little spiders around and said, Merlin, these are not your children, are they? His surprised appearance made Aragog very proud, spiders know how to be proud. Just when it was about to reply. Then I heard Lucas say again, but I heard that you seem to be the only Acromantula in the Forbidden Forest. Then the question is, how did you lay these eggs? And who did you lay them with? Could it be that you have been with your children for so many years? Speaking of which, Lucas looked at Aragog in shock. Aragog didn't understand why Lucas was shocked though. But it could sense the malice in Lucas's words. The kids ate him. Aragog was furious, and the little spiders around him became more violent than before. Lucas puts the teasing back on his face. He stared coldly at the Acromantula opposite. Big words. At this moment, a small spider suddenly jumped out from one side. The two fangs gleamed coldly. Attack on Lucas, the target of his sneak attack. Lucas swung his wand holding right hand at the spider. A silent shattering curse was shot. The little spider was smashed into pieces by the spell in the air. And that's not all. The spell carries a powerful magic power and pushes it all the way. Hardly smashed all the spiders on a line into powder. It is detected that the host is completing the achievement. Spider killer, every time you kill an Acromantula, you can get one achievement point, and you can get 500 achievement points for killing the spider King Aragog, and the achievement points have been accumulated so far. Number. 11. I don't know if it is my illusion. Aragog suddenly felt that the blonde human in front of him was different from before. The other party looked at his eyes. Just like he used to watch those prey. A sense of crisis rose in Aragog's heart. Saw Aragog retreating. Lucas sneered and said, now I know I'm afraid. It's a pity that it's too late. Fire shield plus transformation curse. Blue Fianfire changed the form of presentation. With Lucas's wand waving overhead, the flames instantly engulfed the little spiders around. Several professors who were looking for the whereabouts of the two in the Forbidden Forest. Suddenly, a loud noise was heard in the distance. Immediately afterwards, a blue python soared into the sky. Fire shield. Dumbledore was all too familiar with this magic. He looked at fox in the sky. The other party understood and immediately flew to the front to lead the way. At the same time, Voldemort, who was wandering in the Forbidden Forest, also sensed the powerful magic not far away. Looking at the familiar fiend, Voldemort grew irritable. It's that idiot, hurry over there immediately, I will never let him go this time. Voldemort, who had just drank the blood of the unicorn, was bursting with confidence. Little Quirrell didn't dare to resist his master's order, so he could only rush towards Huo quickly. The blue python raised its head to the sky and opened its mouth wide. It seems to want to swallow the whole sky. Such a spectacular sight. It immediately attracted the attention of Gryffindor and Lowen Kelluo students. Cool. Is that some magical creature? The direction is the Forbidden Forest. Merlin, how many unknown secrets does our school still have? Compared to other little wizards, they just sighed. The Weasley twins looked at the scenery outside the window, and their minds started to wander. Hey Fred, you should know what I'm thinking. Of course George, explore the Forbidden Forest, and I'll find creatures that cast magic. Oh, exciting and thrilling trip to the Forbidden Forest. 
The twins had their arms outstretched, with an intoxicated look on their faces. In the common room, the little lion who hadn't rested was amused by the appearance of the two of them. Neville Longbottom said at this time, Harry and Ron are still in the Forbidden Forest, will they be in danger? Don't worry, the school will definitely be responsible for such a big incident. Perhaps now Headmaster Dumbledore is leading the professors to solve problems in the Forbidden Forest. The words of the twins reassured everyone a lot. But if you observe carefully, you will find that the twins' eyes are full of worry. Ron Weasley, that's their brother. At the same time, Cho Chong in the Raw and Claw Tower is also worried about his friend. Looking at the fire snake raging in the direction of the Forbidden Forest. The figure in Chu Zhang's mind gradually changed from he, 790, Min to a certain blonde boy. She also didn't know when she changed her feelings for the boy. Maybe the other party galloped past him on a broom. Grab the gold snitch who is close to her. Chu Zhang couldn't tell either. But I know that I am afraid that I am going to die. Merlin, why did it become like this? Chu, what's wrong with you? The friend asked worriedly when he saw Chu Zhang rolling on the bed with his head in his arms. Fine, since you have nothing to do, come here quickly, we are discussing whether this vision is related to the school motto, don't disturb the sleeping dragon. Chu Zhang looked at the giant python above the forbidden forest again and said, but isn't that a snake? Entrance to the forbidden forest. Hermione and the others saw the snake head waving in the sky from a distance. The few of them are closer than the students of the castle. The senses are clearer. A wave of heat came from afar. Hermione could even smell the burning smell in the air. Merlin, what happened? What is this blue flame? She looked at Hagrid behind her. I hope this adult wizard can give her an answer that satisfies her. Sorry, Miss Hermione, I've never seen a flame like this either. Lucas, you must be fine. Fearing for Lucas's safety. Miss Hermione, who has always advertised herself as a lady, made an exception and uttered the first swear word in his life. And in the Forbidden Forest, the professors who were looking for Lucas and Della also stopped. Although Snape was shocked by the picture in front of him. But he was more worried about Delico's safety. Few outsiders know about it. He has an excellent relationship with the Malfoys. When Snape first entered Hogwarts as a student, Lucius Malfoy happened to be the senior in the sixth grade. As a half-blood wizard, Snape was often bullied by Slytherin students in that era. Every time it was Lucius who helped him out. He is a man who knows how to be grateful. It's just that I hide my emotions in my heart on weekdays. Everyone, now is not the time to watch the fireworks. Those two reckless idiots haven't been found yet. Please don't stop your steps. As soon as Snape opened his mouth, it was the familiar Slater Lin Fung style. Flitwick and Professor Sprout came to their senses and followed Snape to continue searching. Only Professor McGonagall remained where he was. Professor McGonagall, what's the matter with you? Don't look for it, I know where they are. What? Because Professor McGonagall's voice is too low. No one heard what she said. I said, don't look any further, I already know where they are. There was a ripple in Snape's empty eyes. Where? Professor McGonagall took one look at him, then raised his wand and pointed to where Fianfire was raging. Over there. Oh Merlin, don't those two children have more bad luck than good luck? The eyes of Flitwick and Professor Sprout were full of concern. Only Snape was watching McGonagall. He knew that the other party must have something to say. Fire shield. What? Snape asked in bewilderment. The name of this magic is fire shield. The blue flame you see is actually the improved fianfire. Hearing the word fierce fire, a trace of fear flashed across the faces of several professors. No one knows fiendfire's horrors better than these professors. As fire from hell, it will never go out as long as there are items that can burn. Moreover, Fianfire is so powerful that if a person touches it, they will be burned to ashes almost instantly. Therefore, Fianfire has always been one of the extremely dangerous black arts. How could Fianfire appear in the Forbidden Forest? Merlin, the children in the castle may be in danger, we must stop it. Compared to the anxiety of the other two professors, Snape was much calmer. He looked at the terrified McGonagall and asked, Professor, do you know the origin of this magic? At this moment, Professor McGonagall seemed to recall the elegant and flamboyant man decades ago. Here's Snape's question. 
She sighed. The fire shield was improved by Gellert Grindelwald based on the fierce fire curse and the iron armor curse, plus some protective spells. Her words stunned the others. Gellert Grindelwald, leader of the saints. The most powerful dark wizard decades ago. Even a junior-like Snape, who was born late, had heard of the other party's legendary. Professor Flitwick looked at the flame soaring into the sky in the distance. Stretch out your hand to feel the hot temperature in the air. So, at this moment, the one casting the fire shield in the distance is that kid Lucas Grindelwald. Professor McGonagall nodded. Leave everything to Headmaster Dumbledore. We guard the surrounding area. If something happens to Fiendfire, we will cast a spell together to end him. This is the only way to stop Fiendfire. Snape and the others nodded solemnly. Then, under the leadership of McGonagall, several people moved quickly. The cave of the Acromantula. At this moment, blues flames are everywhere in the cave. Lucas and Delic stood in the central area of absolute safety and looked at the little spiders that were constantly turning into ashes. Congratulations to the host for destroying the giant eight-eyed spider asterisk one, reward, one achievement point. Congratulations to the host for destroying the giant eight-eyed spider asterisk one, reward, one achievement point. Congratulations to the host for destroying the giant Acromantia asterisk one, and get a reward, achievement points. Opening square bracket comma closing square bracket. The system's notification tone kept ringing in my ears. The troubled Lucas made the system turn off the prompt. Watching the ever backward attempt to escape Aragoli. A small flame ignited in Lucas's deep blue eyes. The boa constrictor that was roaring towards the sky fell down, and the position happened to be the direction in which Aragog was escaping. Della K, come to me. Della swallowed her saliva and hurried to Lucas. That's cool. What's this trick called? Can you teach me? Fire shield, it's no problem to teach you, but first of all, your magic power must reach the level of the fifth grade, otherwise it's easy to lose control. When Lucas practiced the fire shield, he was escorted by powerful wizards such as Vita and Abernathy. He will never use it without someone watching him. Lucas made such a request to Della Branch. The main reason is that I am worried that this brat will use it indiscriminately after learning it, and if it gets out of control, the consequences will be disastrous. It's a deal, when my magic power reaches the standard, you must teach me. After speaking, Della looked around. I saw countless spiders coming from all directions. How many spiders like this are there in the Forbidden Forest? Why do I feel like I can't kill them all? I don't know, but there must be tens of thousands. The number of eggs laid by spiders is not fixed, and some spiders can even lay more than a thousand eggs at a time. The Acromantula is even more of a magical creature. I'm afraid only Merlin knows how many children this guy has given birth to. Watching more and more spiders coming up, Lucas raised his wand again. He waved his wand in a circle above his head. The giant python formed by Fianfire immediately coiled into a ball. At this time, Lucas thought of the picture of Dumbledore using Vulcan to clear the way. I thought about giving it a try. So he waved his wand, pointed to the exit of the cave and said, Vulcan makes the way. Flames swarmed. A passage suddenly appeared in front of Lucas and Della. The passage is lined with towering walls of flames. Any spider that tried to attack the two would be reduced to ashes by Fianfire. Before leaving, Lucas also glanced back into the depths of the cave. I saw a big hole there. Obviously, Aragog had just escaped from the hole. What a crafty fellow. After saying that, Lucas took Della and walked away. At the same time, the eight-eyed spiders that were attacking around also fled into the distance. The massacre is over. Not that Lucas didn't want to continue. It was the raging Fian fire that made the surrounding temperature too high. If this continues, the Della family will be roasted alive into jerky. Leaving Fian fire range, Lucas swung his wand to extinguish the flames. The Acromantula's lair has become flat. Where Fian fire raged, not a single weed was left. Congratulations to the host for killing 13,682 giant Acromants, earning a total of 13,682 achievement points winning the title of Golden Spider Killer. Golden Spider Killer. Wearing this title increases damage by 30%, defense by 50%, and poison resistance by 20% when facing all types of spiders. Just one big fire gave Lucas more than 10,000 achievement points.
It's just a pity that Aragog was let go. But that's fine too. 4.9. Looking at the prefix of this title, there should be platinum and diamond grades after that. Keep Aragog, let it continue to have babies. Huh. Come back to life. Della took off his wizard robe, and sat on the ground without a trace. Thank you for saving me, Lucas. Ah. Lucas chuckled, and sat down beside the other party. Just when the two relaxed their vigilance and enjoyed the coolness brought by the breeze. A green light suddenly hit Della K's body. See Della's skin gradually pale. Lucas immediately looked to the dark corner behind him. A figure wearing a black robe walked out slowly, it was Professor Quirrell possessed by Voldemort. The light in Lucas's eyes disappeared. He turned his head to look at Della K beside him. The other party was about to sit down and rest at this time. Huh, come alive. Thank you for saving me, Lucas. Stand up. Lucas pulled Delico up from the ground. At the same time, with a wave of the wand, the scarf around his neck turned into a copper shield. The unique green light of the killing curse flew from a distance. The impact made a crisp ding on the shield. Clap clap. There was a burst of applause behind him. Lucas took advantage of Della's inattention and hit him unconsciously. Do it all. He turned to look at the man in black behind him. I thought it would be a long time before you came out, Professor Quirrell. Perimeter of the Forbidden Forest. The professors saw Fianfire disappear. Understand that Lucas et al. are out of danger. We'll hurry there. Snape walked quickly. It can be seen that he is very worried about Della's safety. Seeing this, the other three professors could only speed up their pace to keep up with the figure in front of them. This is a pain for Professor Flitwick, who has goblin blood. Entrance to the Forbidden Forest. Hermione was looking up at Hagrid. Please Hagrid, take me in, I'm worried if I don't see Lucas. But, Dumbledore has ordered you not to be involved. Hagrid was in a dilemma. If only Hermione begged. He could still ruthlessly refuse. It could be seen that Harry was also staring at him beggingly. Hagrid became momentarily hesitant. Seeing that he had shaken a bit, Hermione continued. Headmaster Dumbledore was worried that we would be burned by the flames, but now the flames are out, aren't they? Hagrid, Della is missing because of me, please. Hagrid looked back and forth at the two young wizards in front of him. At last he sighed and said, when you go in, you must follow me. The two of Hermione nodded quickly. Seeing this, Hagrid picked up the oil lamp and walked towards the entrance. Wait, wait, I suddenly feel sick to my stomach, why don't Yaya and I wait here for you to come back? They didn't force Ron to follow. Agree to his request. Hagrid led Hermione into the Forbidden Forest again. And their direction is also the position where the giant fiery python raged just now. As for the nearest Dumbledore 30. At this moment, it was almost at the eight-eyed spider's lair. He was most worried about Lucas meeting Voldemort. As Voldemort's teacher, even as a guide. Dumbledore knew how powerful the other's rhetoric was. How do you know I'm around? Quirrell asked suspiciously. He thought he was very careful about lurking. There should be no show. Quirrell didn't have the slightest bit of submissiveness in class at this point. His eyes were cold and his face was bloodless. Looks like a dead man. Lucas first helped the unconscious Della to a safe position. Professor Quirrell, the wind in the forest brings with you that sickening smell of garlic. However, I'm curious, what is the professor doing in the forbidden forest if he doesn't rest so late? Lucas looked very relaxed, but the standing position put Della K firmly behind. The hand holding the wand did not relax for a moment. Let me tell him, idiot. A low, husky voice came from the back of Quirrell's head. Lucas raised an eyebrow. The wand in his hand tightened three points again. As Quirrell turned, he took off the hood of his cloak. An old face appeared in front of Lucas. How to describe it? Although Voldemort at this time is better than the noseless image in the future. But that's all. He looks like a rumpled monkey now. Oh, that's amazing, Professor Quirrell, your conjoined twins. Didn't think we'd meet again, little Grindelwald. Sorry, I don't remember knowing a friend like you. Voldemort wasn't offended by Lucas's words. This surprised him a bit. Not to say that as the number of horcruxes made increases. Did Voldemort become very violent and bloodthirsty? Before he could figure it out. Voldemort's deep voice sounded again. No, we met, 
just a few months ago in Gringotts, let me introduce myself, my name is Voldemort. In the silent night, the breeze blows through the forest. Lucas looked at each other calmly. Voldemort also silently stared at the boy in front of him. It's really unexpected, you are one of the few people who are not afraid to hear my name, and I did not misread you. Young man, follow me, I can give you supreme glory, surrender at my feet, kiss the corner of my robe lightly, and honor your loyalty. Ahem, Lucas waved his hand and said, sorry. He took a few deep breaths, suppressing the smile in his heart. Mr. Voldemort, I don't know how you gained the loyalty of the Death Eaters, but I think no normal person would be willing to kneel down and kiss your dirty robe. As for following you, oh Merlin, could you please find a decent body first? Your state is really unconvincing. Follow you, like your physical body that was beaten by someone. Or do you want to hang on to a rodent like you did? Another reminder, Mr. Riddle, my fianfire made such a big commotion just now. The professors should be on their way at this moment, and Dumbledore might be among them, are you sure you want to stay? You are not allowed to mention that last name. Voldemort waved his wand angrily. Red's Crucidus curse flew towards Lucas. Disarm you. Lucas countered quickly. He was quickly wiped out after colliding with Voldemort's spell. The imagined scene like Harry Potter didn't happen. Really. Lucas knew he wasn't a good welder. Thunderbolt explosion. Avada has a big mouth. Shen Feng lying. Cruciate. Bones to pieces. The soul is out of body. The spells of the two were thrown out one after another. The three unforgivable curses were used very skillfully in Voldemort's hands. Lucas didn't budge either. Every spell used carries a mortal threat. The curse exchange between the two lasted for about a minute. Just then, Lucas staggered suddenly. Disarm you. Voldemort seized the opportunity and successfully knocked Lucas's wand into the air. He floated in front of Lucas. The wand in his hand pressed against the opponent's chin, I'll give you another chance. Surrender to me, I allow you to kiss the corner of my robe lightly. Suddenly, a few chuckles sounded, a strong wind blows from the depths. The wizard robes of the two of them were blown loudly. A bad premonition suddenly appeared in Voldemort's heart. Just as he was about to step back, the blonde boy in front of him suddenly raised his head. In the deep blue pupils, there are currently two clusters of dark purple lights dancing. Plunder. Ancient elf magic is activated. There is a mysterious attraction in the palm of Lucas's left hand. Quirrell's magic power was sucked out of the body, and it continuously gathered in Lucas's palm. The magic of purple gives people a mysterious beauty, which is fascinating. But Voldemort was very panicked at the moment. He was desperately trying to break free from Lucas's grip. But the opponent took the first step to control the wand. Only then did Voldemort understand. The boy in front of him deliberately let him knock his wand away just now. It was a bold move. What if it was not the disarming curse that was uttered at that time, but the killing curse? The result would be quite different. Even Voldemort was terrified at this moment by the horrific scheming of the young man in front of him. Are you so sure I'll use the disarming charm? Of course, because my surname is Grindelwald. You must not let go of the opportunity to make me surrender, because I am alive, so I can bring you greater benefits. At this time, looting magic is drawing to a close. Voldemort broke free from his restraints and fled backwards. Lucas looked at the magic power of purple in his palm, and slowly absorbed it. A faint light flashed in his blue eyes. Lucas could clearly feel that his magic power had become much stronger. Please forgive him for being rude before. Fairy magic is really easy to use. It is indeed the magic that only fairies can use. He reached out and recalled his wand. Lucas looked at Voldemort who was wary of him. Just as he was about to start the second round of duel with the opponent. Several people's calls came from the forest in the distance. Lucas, Delico, where are you? Merlin, you must be careful. Lucas. It was the voices of Hagrid, Hermione and Harry. Lucas shrugged his shoulders to Voldemort. It seems that the professors should be here soon, Mr. Voldemort, are you sure you don't want to leave yet? I remember you, dare to reject the great dark lord, when I return, I will definitely not let you go. Lucas nodded perfunctorily, yes, that's right, lord dark lord is awesome, welcome to come again next time. The voice just fell, he raised his wand, disarm you. Voldemort manipulated Quirrell's body and raised his wand to block it. 
but he didn't know that this spell was not as simple as a disarming spell. Voldemort looked in amazement at the wand that was gradually cracking and finally falling apart. He couldn't figure it out. Why would the disarming curse cause such a result? But he has no time to stay and study carefully. Voldemort threw down the broken wand in his hand, turned into a cloud of black smoke and flew into the depths of the forbidden forest. Until the other party walked for a long time, Lucas just relaxes. If it weren't for plundering part of Quirrell's magic, he probably couldn't hold it anymore. The monstrous fiery fire before had cost him a lot of magic power. It is already not easy to fight Voldemort. Congratulations to the host for obtaining a new achievement, repelling the darkness, reward, 200 achievement points. Ding, congratulations to the host for triggering the ultimate achievement. Ultimate achievement. Lucas immediately turned on the system, ready to see what the ultimate achievement is. Ultimate achievement. Unique Demon King, ask the host to collect and destroy all Horcruxes, and defeat Voldemort head-on to win the title of Dark Lord. Once you complete it, you will get a chance to draw a legendary lottery. Note, this achievement requires the host to complete, unify England, and avoid the deaths of Harry Potter, Albus Dumbledore, and Severus Snape during the execution. It turns out that the higher reward than the diamond draw is legendary. Although Lucas has not won a diamond draw so far, but with Slytherin's house points at the moment. As long as Dumbledore doesn't play tricks, taking the house shouldn't be a problem. As long as he gets the Academy Cup, Lucas can taste what the Diamond Lottery is like. System, what can I get from this Legend Lottery? Response to the host, the items obtained from the Legendary Lottery can make the host transcend this world or increase the dimension of this world, which is a super standard reward. Lucas took a deep breath. It seems that this achievement must be completed perfectly. Read carefully the requirements for the achievement. The achievement of unifying England is mainly achieved by ruling the Ministry of Magic of England and obtaining the approval of more than half of the wizards in England. Lucas has arranged for manpower to enter the British Ministry of Magic. But if you want to put your own people in all the important positions, it may not be possible to complete it in a few years. The good news is that he still has plenty of time. As for the approval of more than half of the wizards in England, this is actually very simple. Just stand on the opposite side of Voldemort, and lead the people to resist with a strong posture after Voldemort returns. Therefore, Voldemort must be resurrected according to the original plan. Even Lucas has to help the other party resurrect. The really hard part was destroying Voldemort's horcrux. And among the crowd of horcruxes, the first thing that bothers Lucas the most is the resurrection stone ring. The curse was so powerful that not even Dumbledore could resist it. Not even Snape, the potion's master, could do anything about it. But the achievement requires Dumbledore to be alive. This is a bit troublesome. Certainly, Lucas didn't intend to let the other party die. He was about to take Dumbledore back to Nirmengard. As for Harry Potter, this accidental horcrux. Like Dumbledore, it is necessary to destroy the horcrux in his body. His life also needs to be preserved. The only thing Lucas can think of at the moment is the method in the original book. Make Harry the master of the Elder Wand, then give the Elder Wand to Voldemort. The Elder Wand does not kill its master. But it would kill the Horcrux fragments in Harry's body. But Lucas still has the achievement of collecting the Deathly Hallows to complete. The achievement is very clear, he must get the Deathly Hallows to recognize the master before it is considered complete. Lucas frowned. It's over. My head is so itchy, it seems like my brain is about to grow out. Forget it, start with the easy ones. Look for opportunities to go to the room of requirement. Get Ra and Klaus crown first. He didn't expect it either. I'm only in my first year. Just triggered so many long-running series achievements. It seems that I need to make a plan when I go back. This is really a thrilling and exciting challenge. There was a strong confidence in Lucas's eyes. Challenges are more fun. If he always follow the steps, wouldn't he become more and more boring? Let out a foul breath. Lucas turned to look at a big tree behind him. Professor Dumbledore, are you there? Clap clap. What a wonderful spell, if Professor Flitwick sees it, he will be proud of having an excellent student like you. Dumbledore was wearing a nightgown. Wearing a pointed hat with stars and moons on his head. Looks like a Santa Claus. 
Long time no see, professor, we haven't spoken since Halloween, and I haven't asked you, do you like my Christmas present? Seeing the smile on Dumbledore's mouth soften, Lucas felt much better. Oh, of course I do. Wool socks and sweets are my favorites, and thanks for the game console, even though I don't know how to use it. By the way, have you read the book I gave you? Lucas nodded his thanks. Then the two fell into a brief silence. Dumbledore stared at the boy in the moonlight, mentally comparing him to Grindelwald. Soon he found out, Lucas is stronger than the young Grindelwald. At least with such a large fire shield, Grindelwald couldn't do it when he was young. Lucas was also wondering at this moment why Dumbledore had come. He didn't know how long Dumbledore had been here. Even more uncertain about the purpose of the other party coming alone. Is it really worried about him and Della Branch? Lucas shook his head mockingly, maybe there would be. But definitely not much. Lucas, I think we should have a good talk, what do you think? Of course, Professor. Lucas didn't refuse. He would like to hear what the old bee was up to. Seeing the other party motioning for himself to approach. Lucas looked worriedly at Delicay lying on the ground. Don't worry, Snape and the others will be here soon, and Mr. Malfoy will be fine. Oh well. Dazzling fire flashed. Lucas and Dumbledore disappeared from the Forbidden Forest. Not long after, the sound of chaotic footsteps came from all around. Look at the Della family lying on the ground. Professor Snape ran forward to check. It's okay, it's just a stun spell. Recover quickly. A white light flashed along with the wand. Delico wakes up from a coma. Dean, Professor McGonagall. Della, what happened, Lucas? Hermione anxiously asked about Lucas's whereabouts. Lucas. Della shook his head. I remembered the picture I saw before I passed out. We escaped from the Acromant Spider's lair, and someone attacked us. It's the killing curse. Oh Merlin, are you sure you read it correctly? Is it really the killing curse? Delico looked at Flitwick with a serious expression, he was very sure that he was right. The expressions of several professors immediately became serious after hearing this. The three unforgivable curses are called unforgivable curses. It is because they are too powerful and cruel. Whether it is the killing curse's instant death. Or tortured by the Crucitus curse. It is unbearable for ordinary people. The Ministry of Magic expressly forbids its use. Anyone who finds the user will be immediately imprisoned in the wizard prison of Azkaban. Backquote by the way, where is Lucas? I saw him fighting against the opponent before I passed out. Snape said in a low voice, you were the only one here when we arrived. Sobbing came from behind. Hermione was crying behind Hagrid's back. It was obvious that she was very worried about Lucas's situation. Professor McGonagall stepped forward to comfort him. Don't worry, Mr. Grindelwald is the most excellent and powerful little wizard I have ever seen. He will be fine, trust me. Maybe he just left with Headmaster Dumbledore first, and everything is still unconcluded, don't be sad. Mention Dumbledore. Everyone thought of this centenarian. Although he is old, he is stronger than anyone present. The other party didn't show up, maybe it was really with Lucas. Worrying Lucas. At the moment, he is sipping hot black tea on the sofa in the principal's office. He and Dumbledore had been back for a while. Neither of them spoke first. Each person has a cup of black tea, as if they intend to dispel the chill from their bodies first. Lucas, I am surprised by your strength. If I read correctly, the fire shield just now should require the level of an adult wizard to cast it. Lucas didn't give a precise answer. In fact, because it is a combination of fire shield plus transformation spell. Lucas consumed much more mana than he imagined good Zhao how. But Dumbledore didn't know it, and thought it was Grindelwald's improved fire shield charm. But this is also good, just to confuse the other party. Seeing that Lucas didn't speak, Dumbledore thought he was right. He couldn't help saying with emotion, you are the most powerful little wizard I have seen in the past few decades. Your talent is beyond doubt, and your talent is even more enviable. Old B, blame me for being young and reading less. Who would believe such nonsense? Lucas was drinking black tea, thinking silently in his heart. Maybe he's more magical than most wizards now. But after all these years in the wizarding world, what kind of people has Dumbledore never seen? Let's not talk about it. Let's just say that Voldemort was decades ago, wasn't he excellent enough when he was in school? 
Seeing that Lucas didn't respond, Dumbledore knew it too. Facing the young man in front of him, the usual methods of fooling the little wizard were useless. He needs to talk to the other person as an adult. Dumbledore put down his teacup. Glasses reflect a bright light. Lucas, how about we do another deal? Hear him. Lucas immediately raised his head, with interest in his eyes. Interested to see Lucas, Dumbledore breathed a sigh of relief. He didn't understand why he did this either. Since the Halloween talk, Dumbledore always felt a little bit of pressure when facing the young man in front of him. He is already over a hundred years old. Just arranging for Harry and Voldemort had taken up most of his energy. Dumbledore didn't want to have to worry about being calculated every time he talked to Lucas. So, the best way is to not meet each other. But this time is different. Harry still lacked someone who would guide him all the time. Dumbledore had previously planned to have the clever Miss Granger befriend Harry. But it was destroyed by Lucas at the beginning of school. Della later became friends with Harry. After observing for a long time, Dumbledore came to a conclusion. Delico Malfoy was a spoiled child. He couldn't help Harry in critical moments. On the contrary, Lucas Grindelwald is a good candidate. Excellent, powerful, calm, shrewd. Such a person is too suitable to be Harry's guide. Help him to the final victory. Dumbledore took a deep breath and asked, Lucas, what do you think of muggles? Opinion. No opinion, I like muggle technology, and I prefer to make their money. But it is undeniable that muggles are really powerful. Since the last war, they have become more and more oppressive. Why? I don't know when we will be discovered by muggles in the future, but I think when muggles discover us, it may be the beginning of a new round of witch hunting. 763 inches. Listen to Lucas's statement. Dumbledore was silent for a long time before speaking again. So you agree with the muggle threat theory? It's true, Professor, muggles are indeed much stronger than we imagined, and their individual weapons can even shoot us from a mile away. But what about our spells? Can they hit enemies a mile away? They can shoot us before we even know it. Dumbledore was silent again, and then retorted, the fact is that the muggle prime minister knows about wizards. Lucas sighed inwardly. He is actually very clear. Many wizards in the wizarding world look down on muggles. Especially the native pureblood wizards. If these words were spoken to Lucius Malfoy today, the other party will probably scoff. As a canary in a cage. Many pureblood wizards also believe that a single wand is invincible in the muggle world. Dumbledore doesn't have that old concept though. But is the greatest wizard of the century. And why didn't he feel that magic was more powerful? Seeing Dumbledore wanted to talk about it. Lucas sighed. Forget it, let's not talk about this topic, we will talk about the future. You just need to know that I don't look down on muggles, on the contrary, I would like to make friends with them. In my company in the muggle world, more than 90% of the employees are muggles, and we get along very well. So, now can you tell us about our deal? Dumbledore nodded, and took out a new box of candies to place on the round table. Lucas, I'm old, I don't have enough energy to do many things, did you see him today? Voldemort, Lucas asked. Dumbledore nodded, you are more courageous than many wizards. Many people in the wizarding world dare not call Voldemort by his name directly, and only dare to use you know who instead. Since you have met Voldemort, you also know that he is not dead, or that he has not reached death in the true sense. See Lucas nod, Dumbledore repeats. Professor Sybil Trelawney made a prophecy eleven years ago. The man with the power to conquer the Dark Lord approached, he was born in a family that had defeated the Dark Lord three times, at the end of the seventh month, the Dark Lord marked him as his rival. Harry, Lucas asked pretending to be surprised. Dumbledore nodded affirmatively. Lucas, I can feel my mojo fading, and I'm afraid there will be surprises in the future. I can't always be by Harry's side. Harry also needs someone to guide him on the right path, so. So you chose me, didn't you? Dumbledore nodded, waiting for Lucas's reply. Sorry, allow me to refuse. Lucas you, please hear me out, Mr. Headmaster. Lucas interrupted. You should know who I am. Harry and I are always together, which will cause a lot of unnecessary trouble and suspicion. I really hate trouble. Secondly, no one knows when Voldemort will return, considering his current state. With all due respect, 
Any elite aura could take it down, and there's no way I'd protect Harry for the rest of my life. Hearing this, Dumbledore hastily interjected, it doesn't need a lifetime, just seven years in school. As soon as he finished speaking, Lucas shook his head. Impossible, seven years is too long, two years at most, and these two years include this year. Professor Dumbledore needs to help me solve the seized properties in Paris and Berlin, and ensure that the shops can reopen. This, Dumbledore frowned. What, DACB, this should be a small problem for you, and with your prestige in the two countries, it can be easily done. I didn't mean that. It's just that the protection period is too short. How about five years? When Harry enters the fifth grade, he should have the power to protect himself. Two years, only two years. Lucas said with a firm tone. To do business, of course, it is the most cost-effective to sign a short-term contract. As long as the service is good, if you want to sign next time, it will be another price. Mr. Lucas, the profiteer, Grindelwald's little plan was clinking. Dumbledore was silent for a long time. Looking at Lucas sincerely, my energy is getting worse day by day, since I am an old friend of your father, how about three years? Oh who? Playing the emotional card! Exclamation mark. Professor, as far as I know, the reason why my father didn't step out of the Tower of Nurmengard was because he lost to an old friend and kept the agreement between them. Lucas finished speaking. Dumbledore froze. Although I know it's not good to say that in person. But Lucas couldn't help it, he couldn't vomit. Old B has been enjoying Hogwarts every day these years. But his father locked himself in a hut on the high tower of Nurmengard. Just think about it and get angry. Sorry for the swearing. Lucas took a deep breath, and was about to ask the other party if he wanted to continue the transaction. Just listen to Dumbledore's lost tone. In order to fight against Voldemort, I set up a non-governmental organization called the Order of the Phoenix. If you agree to help Harry, I will give it to you. People in the organization will also help you to assist Harry, so that you don't have to work too hard, how? Lucas didn't reply right away. Alarm bells were ringing in my mind. I can't, the old bee has no good intentions, he's digging a hole. Not to mention that the Order of the Phoenix was built on Dumbledore. Even if it was handed over to Lucas, those in the Order of the Phoenix would not obey his orders. Secondly, just relying on the three melons and two dates of the Order of the Phoenix, he wants to exchange the help of his entire saints. Dumbledore's little calculation was loud enough. Sorry, Professor, I don't want to be the leader of some non-governmental organization, you should hire someone else. However, if you promise me two conditions, three years is not impossible. Originally, Dumbledore was a little disappointed. Unexpectedly, the peak will turn around in the end. What? Looked at Dumbledore curiously. Lucas said with a smile. During the holiday, the reopening of my stores in other two countries will be held in the French trial court. I need you to accompany me to attend. Dumbledore frowned slightly. In a few seconds, he readily agreed. Anyway, he had made a move to protect Lucas last time. The first time is raw and the second time is cooked, this time is not bad. Second point, I am more interested in the Philosopher's Stone, I need to study it for a day, don't worry, I promise to return it to you intact. Okay, it's a deal. Dumbledore agreed more readily this time. The deal is done. Lucas had Phoenix Fox send himself back to the Forbidden Forest. Wait until Lucas leaves the office. Dumbledore changed his disappointment just now. Just providing a shelter and a stone that was about to be destroyed, in exchange for Harry's peace of mind for three years, this deal is a good deal. Dumbledore seemed quite pleased with his performance. But he doesn't know, because of the ultimate achievement. Even if he pays nothing, Lucas also needs to keep Harry alive until the finale. Not only Harry, but even Dumbledore himself was under protection. Forbidden Forest. Accompanied by a flash of fire. Lucas returned to the eight-eyed spider's lair. At this time Snape and the others had already left. Lucas stretched and was about to go back. He heard Hermione's sobbing call not far away. Lucas, where the hell have you been? Time travels back to after Lucas disappeared from the Forbidden Forest. Professor McGonagall led the crowd to look for Lucas's whereabouts. Several people turned the giant eight-eyed spider's nest upside down. Still no trace of Lucas. Hagrid, are you sick? Why are you sweating so much? No, nothing. Hagrid was very worried. 
He is too familiar with this place, it is the territory of his pet Aragog. The thought of Lucas fighting Aragog disappeared. He was worried about the recurrence of the events 50 years ago. In fact, until now he had a record with the Ministry of Magic. If it is confirmed that a little wizard had an accident in the Forbidden Forest, the Ministry of Magic would think of him first, and put him in Azkaban. Harry looked at the guilty Hagrid very puzzled, then thought. It was Hagrid who led them into the Forbidden Forest today. The other party may be afraid of being punished, so he feels relieved. Hagrid, don't worry, Lucas is so good, he will be fine. Mr. Harry good-hearted Mr. Potter also comforted Hagrid. I searched for a while. Professor McGonagall suggested going back to the castle first. Maybe Lucas had already gone back with Dumbledore. Hermione was worried though, but seeing several professors nodded in agreement. She had no choice but to follow back to the Ron Kelluo Tower. Hermione, are you alright? What happened in the Forbidden Forest just now, you're worrying me to death. Hermione had just returned to the Lewen Klau Lounge. Chu Zhang greeted him with a worried face. Chu, I'm fine. Hermione doesn't look like she's okay right now. It's just that everyone thought she was just frightened, so they didn't continue to ask. Another hour or so passed. Lowen Keluo's young eagles also returned to their rooms to rest. Hermione came out of the lounge fully dressed. Holding a wand in hand, she came to the forbidden forest again. Lucas, can you hear me? Ah, the howling of wolves in the distance startled the little witch. She had long heard that there were werewolves in the forbidden forest. But, thinking that Lucas has no news until now, she suppressed her fear in her heart. With firm eyes, he walked deep into the forbidden forest. Lucas, where the hell have you been? My beautiful lady, may I help you? A familiar voice behind him made Hermione stop. She turned sharply away. He saw that the person he was worried about was standing under a big tree and looking at him. Do not know why. See the smile on each other's faces. Hermione, who was still worried, was very angry. She didn't say anything, but walked towards each other step by step. Lucas was just about to tell Hermione that he was fine. He was staggered by a huge force. Laughing. I'm almost dying of worry, but you're still laughing. Where did you go? Why didn't you show up until now? Do you know how worried I am, you bloody fool? The little witch's anger took Lucas by surprise. Fists rained down on him. He had no choice but to admit his mistake and apologize first. Look at the tears in each other's eyes. Lucas pulled Hermione into his arms. I'm sorry, I shouldn't just disappear without saying anything, I promise to tell you first no matter what I do in the future. Hermione struggled twice. Then it was quiet. You fool, you really don't make people worry. Hear the little witch whimpering. Lucas breathed a sigh of relief, it seemed that the other party's anger was gone. I'm sorry, I won't do it next time, and thank you for coming to me. The two embraced and looked at each other. Gradually, the two figures approached gradually. The moonlight shone on the two of them. In this extremely dangerous forbidden forest, the young wizard had their first moon kiss. Oh, so our Mr. Grindelwald knows to go back to his school. A low, melodious tone came from the gate of the castle. Watching Snape walk in front of him with a sullen face, Lucas said with a wry smile, Professor Snape, haven't you slept yet? Thanks to some stupid, arrogant guy, the deans of the four colleges can't rest until now, Mr. Grindelwald, what do you think I should do with him? Sorry professor. No no no, you don't need to apologize, as punishment for almost burning the forbidden forest to ashes, Slytherin will take two points. In addition, because of your stupidity and arrogance, you have delayed the normal rest of the professors, so another three points will be deducted. Now, go back to your dormitory immediately, or I will continue to deduct points from my college. 17. Lucas was about to nod when he suddenly remembered Hermione sleeping in his arms. Seeing his embarrassed expression, Snape added, send this little witch who trespassed in the forbidden forest back to where she should be, and then back to her dormitory. After the other party finished speaking, he turned around and entered the castle. Send Hermione back to the Ron Corral Tower. Lucas walked down the stairs to the basement. Hogwarts at night is very scary. It's okay if there is no light in the deep corridor. From time to time, the hooting of owls came from the darkness. Lucas held his wand all the way to the first floor. 
faintly heard someone crying. Following the sound of crying, he came to the girl's bathroom on the first floor. Since you're here, why not try to see if you can open the secret room? Single quote. Lucas pushed open the bathroom door. Phantom Myrtle was weeping happily. Suddenly interrupted, very unhappy. But when she saw the person who broke in, immediately shouted in horror, Grindelwald. As soon as the words fell, she turned into a streamer and fell headlong into the toilet in the cubicle. Lucas ignored Myrtle's surprise. He came to the round washbasin. Looked carefully for the faucet with the engraved snake pattern. Soon, the faucet appeared in front of his eyes. Ahem. Hiss. Lucas practiced the sound of a snake. Then imitate the voice in the movie and say, open. Waited about 30 seconds. The mechanism of the washbasin did not respond at all. Lucas said again in disbelief, open. Speak to me, Slytherin, the greatest of the Hogwarts Four. Salazar, Lord of the Slytherins. Salazar is an ugly monkey. Stupid, pompous Slytherin, comma. If Lucas tried to open the Chamber of Secrets in a serious manner at first. Then the latter words are purely scolding. It turns out. Parseltongue doesn't succeed just by imitating it. Even Dumbledore can only understand Parseltongue, but not a Parseltongue. As for Ron, well, he's an exception. Mr. Lucas Grindelwald. Suddenly, a strange voice came from behind. Lucas turned and raised his wand. Seeing Cedric appear at the door, he was relieved. So it's you, Cedric, what are you doing on the first floor if you stay up so late? Cedric turned to look at the girl's washbasin sign hanging outside. The expression was tangled for a long time, not knowing whether to ask or not. I'm hungry and looking for something to eat, you. Cedric glanced at Lucas, then at the sign on the door. Don't get me wrong, this washbasin has been abandoned long ago, and no one usually comes here. Cedric nodded, but he didn't look very convinced. Lucas didn't explain any more. He came to the door and looked at the other party curiously. Cedric, I remember correctly, you should be a third grader. That's right, what's wrong? Lucas shook his head. I'm just curious, you've been in Hogwarts for so long, and you don't even know where the kitchen is. As he spoke, he led Cedric to the basement. The Hogwarts kitchen is actually not far from Hufflepuff's dormitory. The two came to a portrait of fruit. Cedric looked at Lucas puzzled, only to see that Lucas reached out and scratched a pear in the painting. Pear actually giggled miraculously. Immediately afterwards, a green doorknob appeared on the portrait. Lucas opens the door. There is nothing hidden behind the door. Hundreds of house elves are busy making breakfast for the next day. Oh, a distinguished guest has come to the kitchen. Hello, what can I do for you, Beachy? Give me a cup of black tea, please, and prepare something for this gentleman to eat. After Lucas finished speaking, he looked at Cedric behind him. The other party hadn't recovered yet. When he reacted, several pieces of cake and mashed potatoes had appeared in front of him. Thanks, oh Merlin. The distinguished guest actually said thank you to Beach, and Beach is so moved. The house elf cried with teary eyes. His appearance made Cedric a little bit unbearable. Lucas was accustomed to drinking black tea. By the time the two left the kitchen, it was already half an hour later. Look at Hufflepuff's common room not far away. Cedric said nervously, want to come to our lounge? Of course I will not refuse Prince Hufflepuff's invitation. Speaking of which, Luca hasn't entered Hufflepuff's lounge for so long. It seems that I will get another achievement tonight. The Hufflepuff College lounge is just to the right of the kitchen hallway. There was a large pile of wooden barrels stacked there. Behind these barrels is the lounge. The entrance to Hufflepuff is the only one of the four houses that does not require a password. But the entrance is equipped with a resistance device. Anyone who wants to get into the Hufflepuff dorms. Both require the wand to tap the bottom of the second barrel in the second row in a unique rhythm. Lucas watched as the lid of the barrel opened. Some puzzled and asked Cedric to look. Please, climb in. Cedric nodded. Lucas had no choice but to bite the bullet and climb inside the barrel. Hufflepuff's common room is full of nature. Herbs and specimens are everywhere. No wonder Hufflepuff's students are doing well in herbalism. The whole lounge is dominated by yellow and black. There are also several circular windows on one side of the wall. Standing by the window, you can just see the green grass and dandelions outside the castle. 
140, this place is really nice and warm. Just sit down if you like it, I'll get some drinks. Wait until Cedric leaves. Lucas wandered around the lounge. Congratulations to the host for obtaining a new achievement. Hufflepuff Lounge, reward, 100 achievement points. Same as before, there are only exploration achievements in the lounge. The overall exploration progress of Hufflepuff Academy has not been completed. Lucas carefully looked for hidden mechanisms in the lounge. Lucas, there's only some juice in the dorm, don't you mind? Thanks. Lucas took the cup, looked around and praised. I've been to Lawen Keluo's lounge, it's full of books, it's like a small library. The lounge in Slytherin is not good either, it's too dark, because we're under the Black Lake. It's better with your place, although it's also a basement, but the sunlight can shine in through the windows, and there are so many plants. Here Lucas prays. Cedric was very happy. Actually, it's not as good as you said. Many of these flowers and plants were brought back by Dean Sprout, and others were planted by some students according to their preferences. When the two are chatting, Lucas's eyes kept scanning everything in the lounge. Until he saw the portrait above the fireplace. This is Ms. Helga Hufflepuff. That's right, the founder of our academy. Cedric looked at the portrait with pride written all over his face. The witch in the portrait is slightly fat, wearing a yellow and black wizard robe. The most eye-catching thing is the other party's smile. Lady legendary Helga Hufflepuff is a gentle witch. Everyone who has met her will have a good impression of her. Every time the three giants quarreled, Ms. Helga Hufflepuff came forward to mediate. Miss Hufflepuff, for a worthy witch. As soon as Lucas finished speaking, several calls came from the direction of the boys' dormitory. Cedric put the glass down shyly, apologizing and walking towards the boys' dormitory. Lucas is again alone in the waiting room. He came to the fireplace. Look at Ms. Hufflepuff's raised left hand in the portrait. In her hand, she was holding her own golden cup. Lucas accidentally took out the Hufflepuff gold cup. When he brought the real gold cup close to the portrait, the two golden cups coincided miraculously. Then came a sense of dizziness. Wait for Lucas to come back to his senses. He has appeared in a stone room. The gold cup is still in his hand. And in front of him was a square stone platform. Luminescence. In the light of the wand. Lucas approached the stone platform cautiously. There is only a chiseled dent in the stand. It seems that it should be used to place the gold cup. Put the gold cup into the dent, and the stone platform emits a white light. Helga Hufflepuff's name slowly appeared on the stage. Lucas stared at the stone platform for a long time. Unsure, writes his name on it with his wand. The sense of weightlessness came again. Lucas felt like he had been thrown into the washing machine. I don't know how many turns. He fell on a lawn. Congratulations to the host for obtaining a new achievement. Hufflepuff's Secret Garden, Reward, 500 Achievement Points. Congratulations to the host for obtaining a new achievement. Exploring Hufflepuff Academy, Reward. 2000 achievement points. Lucas was not happy about the sudden 2500 achievement points. In other words, he could not care about checking the system at all at the moment. What appeared in front of him was a vast grassland. Not far from him, a group of ball chasing birds walked by in a line. Seeing him as a good guest, Chu Duniao teleported forward one by one. Lucas looked around, whether it is caves, woods, snow mountains, swamps. It can be seen in this space. Even day and night can appear at the same time. It's like Newt Scamander's suitcase. But Lucas can assure you. The space here is infinitely larger than Newt's. I don't know how Ms. Hufflepuff managed to accomplish this feat in the first place. He really couldn't imagine what level of traceless stretching spell could create such an environment. Lucas picked up the gold cup that fell on the ground. I found an extra mark on my arm. A message came from the sigil. It turns out that this imprint is equivalent to a door key, allowing Lucas to freely enter this space for the first time. After Helga Hufflepuff, Lucas became the second owner of this space. That's pretty cool, although it has long been suspected. But actually found Hufflepuff's chamber. Lucas was still shocked inside. That being the case, Nala when Keluo and Gryffindor must have left the Chamber of Secrets back then. Almost instantly. Lucas remembered the statue of Roina Lawen K. Lao in the Lawen K. Lao lounge. Statue. Crown. He seemed to understand something. 
Looks like going to the room of requirement ASAP and getting Ra and Klaus crown out. Put the gold cup back away. Lucas began to visit the secret garden that belonged only to him. The magical animals here have formed a complete food chain. Learn by understanding. This space. It was originally created by Ms. Hufflepuff to protect the magical animals that were hunted. At the beginning, the ancestors of these animals signed a contract with space. Any magical animal that lives here. They must obey the orders of the space master. Got the news. Lucas thanked Ms. Hufflepuff in his heart. Isn't this sending him an army of animals? He just saw it all. There are poisonous leopards and horned poisonous beasts. There are also birds and snakes that can grow and shrink, and thunderbirds that summon thunderstorms. There are unicorns that cleanse poison and so on and so forth. More than these, there are many herbal medicines in the space, and there are even herbal medicines that have long been recognized as extinct. Lucas took a deep breath. He is going to get rich. Wait until Lucas returns to the Hufflepuff lounge. Cedric hasn't come back yet. Hufflepuff left. Lucas tossed and turned all night. Tonight was a very rewarding day for him. First, get more than 10,000 achievement points from the giant eight-eyed spider. Then there was a second confrontation with Voldemort. He also absorbed part of the magic power from the opponent to strengthen himself. After that, he signed a three-year short-term contract with Dumbledore. At last, it was a coincidence that confirmed his conjecture. Also got a piece of portable space. Oh, Merlin. Hogwarts is such a place full of surprises. Early the next morning, Lucas left the Slytherin quarters before dawn. He came to the outskirts of the Forbidden Forest and released his elf breath with all his strength. Not long after, a gold pony came running towards him. Baby unicorns love being around Lucas. Professor Kettleburn would have been surprised to see this. Little guy, come with me, and I will take you to a safer place to live. As magical creatures, even unicorns are very young. But he could already understand what Lucas wanted to express. It took a few steps forward and placed its forehead in Lucas's palm. With a soft sound, one man and one beast disappeared in place. Hufflepuff's secret garden. Lucas appears in a forest with a little unicorn. A group of unicorns are playing leisurely not far away. Sensing his arrival, the unicorns gathered around one after another. Introduce a new friend to everyone. Lucas let the little unicorn behind him. It looks a little scary. Always trying to hide behind Lucas. At this time, several unicorns who were also young came up to meet them. Just like human children. With a playmate, the little unicorn's fear of unfamiliar environments has eased a lot. Wait until the little unicorn is fully acclimatized to the new environment. Lucas also left the secret garden. Have to say. The space that Ms. Helga has created really works. Pass the test just now. Lucas found that as long as it is a magical animal that enters the secret garden. A contract will be automatically signed. The idea in my heart was verified. Lucas took another look at the forbidden forest in front of him. His exploration of the forbidden forest was only a small part completed. But right now there are more important things to do. The eighth floor of Hogwarts Castle. Lucas stands in front of the troll stick 30 dozen silly Barnabas tapestry. I need a place to hide my stuff. Mind your own needs. A delicate door gradually appeared on the wall. Push the door and enter. Lucas immediately froze in place. He was sure that the crown of Ron Clow must be hidden here. Because the layout of the room is almost the same as the original. But no one has ever told him that this hidden room is actually so big. Lucas looked across the endless room. Immediately felt a little headache. The crown flies. Even though I know it's useless. But he still used the flying curse with luck. A few minutes passed, and there was no movement in the room. Harry deserves to be the person who has the aura of the protagonist, and he can find the crown in such a room. This secret room was probably used as a storage place for waste items. Dilapidated boxes, old portraits and broken tables and chairs can be seen everywhere. Even Lucas saw a few broomsticks used by medieval wizards. Maybe it's because there's more and more scrap. The room of response also expands the area of the room repeatedly. Until now, the entire secret room is almost the size of three football fields. It was a real embarrassment to find a crown in such a large place. Lucas put away his wand. 
Follow the road into the mountains of waste. Two hours later, Lucas walks out of the room of requirement. Seeing the dust on the wizard's robes, he waved his wand to give himself a fresh clean. Where did this Voldemort hide his crown? Lucas's tone was tinged with irritation. With such a large area, he may not be able to find it all in one year. Lucas. Hermione's voice came from the stairs beside her. Looking at the little witch holding a thick book in her arms. Lucas asked, going to the library again. That's right. Exams are coming soon. I heard that Hogwarts exams are scary. The little witch seems to be suffering from exam phobia recently. I don't know who is spreading the rumors. It is said that the Hogwarts exams are very scary and very difficult. This made Our Lady know it all very anxious. These days I'm either attending class or reading books in the library. Lucas originally thought that after yesterday's trip to the Forbidden Forest, the other party could be somewhat relieved. But now it seems that the effect is not great. My dear, the exams at Hogwarts are just like muggle schools, and you are so excellent, you don't need to worry at all. Here Lucas's address. Hermione's face seemed to be covered with a red glow. She said coquettishly, what nonsense, there are people everywhere. Maybe the exam is just not difficult for you. During the conversation, the two came to the library. The exam is approaching, and the library is full of young wizards cramming. Lucas had a hard time finding an empty table, looking at the little witch who was studying hard. Lucas, who had nothing to do, found a biography book at random. After a while, I really looked in. He found that the biographies of the wizarding world are actually no different from novels. By the way, Mr. Potter and Mr. Malfoy came to see me just now. They seemed to be investigating the Sorcerer's Stone and asked me a few questions. After Hermione finished speaking, she looked at Lucas. In fact, she was still very interested in the Philosopher's Stone. Lucas, can the Philosopher's Stone really make people live forever? Didn't Nico Flamel confirm it? Lucas closed the book in his hand. However, it only prolongs people's lifespan, and their physical functions have not been improved. Clever as Hermione was, she understood what Lucas meant right away. Suddenly lost interest in the Philosopher's Stone. Speaking up. During this time, Della Branch always followed Harry to investigate the Philosopher's Stone. Maybe a few people have already been to the corridor on the fourth floor. Merlin's beard, I finally found you. Say Sao Sao, Sao Sao will arrive. Della Branch, Harry and Mr. Weasley came from the door. Because Della Co spoke too loudly, he also got a glare from Mrs. Pants. Lucas saw the books in their hands. His expression was slightly surprised. Unexpectedly, these guys would also come to study. Several people came to Lucas's empty table and sat down. I accidentally made a sound when I moved the chair. Harry also looked back at Mrs. Pants behind him. Not surprisingly, he once again received Mrs. Pants's glare. Lucas, after what happened in the Forbidden Forest last night, I probably already understand what's going on. Harry's words attracted the attention of Lucas and Hermione. Seeing the two top students acting like they were listening, Harry felt a little smug. At first I thought that Snape was going to steal the Philosopher's Stone and sell it, but now I overturned this conclusion. You may not know, I met that man in the Forbidden Forest last night, Voldemort. When Harry mentioned the title Voldemort, his voice was very low, as if he was afraid that the people around him would hear him. Ahem. Harry, it's Professor Snape. Harry looked at Lucas strangely. It seems that this is the time to talk about it, and you are still entangled in addressing me. Harry took a deep breath and said again, it should be like this, Snape. See Lucas glance over at him. He quickly changed his words. Professor Snape's purpose was probably to steal the Philosopher's Stone under the trapdoor, but with the three-headed dog Lu Wei guarding him, he failed. But I believe that Professor Snape will not give up. When he gets the Philosopher's Stone, he will dedicate it to Voldemort in the Forbidden Forest. Harry, can you stop saying that person's name? Ron said with a look of fear on his face. Harry ignored it, but looked at the crowd and continued. Then Voldemort can live forever, regain his strength, and then he can come and kill me. Look, what a beautiful plan. At the end, Harry's voice couldn't help but rise. After he finished speaking, Mrs. Pants's voice sounded behind everyone. If I hear 120 voices from you guys again, leave the library for me. Sorry, Mrs. Pants. 
Hermione apologized hastily, then looked at Harry. Wait until Mrs. Pants leaves. Everyone breathed a sigh of relief. Hermione turned her head to look at the worried Harry and said, your worry is a little too much. This is Hogwarts, and there are people who are also afraid of mysterious people. Seeing Harry pointing at himself, Hermione said helplessly, Dumbledore, it's Dumbledore. As the greatest wizard of this century, Voldemort has no reason not to be afraid of him, so what are you worried about? You're safe in Hogwarts. But we can't just watch Snape steal the Philosopher's Stone. Seeing Lucas look at himself again, Harry added, Professor, it's rare that Delico and Ron don't make fun of each other. The two nodded in support of their friends, thinking that Harry was right. At this time, Lucas, who had finished reading the biography, raised his head to look at several people. Whether Harry is right or not, these things have nothing to do with us for the time being. It's only a few days before the exam, and I can assure you that if one of the three of you fails in the exam, it will end badly. It will even affect whether he can enter the Quidditch team next semester. When Lucas said this, he kept looking at Delico. Mr. Malfoy was still waiting for his son's results to show off to others. If the Della section exam fails, Lucas can guarantee that Mr. Malfoy must be more dangerous than the three-headed dog. And, he didn't want them to continue the investigation at this moment. Everything has to wait until the end of the exam. This exam is the key to whether Lucas can successfully get the diamond lottery. Whoever dares to cause trouble at this time, he will give him a win to play. Even Voldemort and Dumbledore. Final exams are finally here. The first year freshmen looked nervous. The senior students looked at them with evil taste. Sometimes he even made threats. Before entering the examination room, Lucas stood in front of Slater's Linny e. Grader. I won't say anything superfluous, please remember the honor of your family in Slytherin. If I find out that you have done something harmful to Slytherin, don't blame me for being too harsh. Don't worry Lucas, how could we cheat like that? Boo Reese Zabini's voice came from the crowd. Lucas turned his head to look at the other party, the thing I'm most worried about is you, Mr. Zabini. If you can shift your energy from being a woman to studying, I won't be so worried. The little snakes of Slytherin laughed out loud. Zabini looked at Lucas with embarrassment and a hint of annoyance. At this time, the written test is about to start. Hogwarts exams are divided into two parts, written and practical. The written test is the same as the Muggle school, it is all theoretical knowledge. Enter the classroom. The professors had already set parchment and new quills on the table. There is also an anti-cheating spell cast on the quill. It seems that the means of preventing cheating in the wizarding world is indeed much more convenient than that of muggles. It's early summer now. The huge classroom was unbearably stuffy, and many young wizards were taking exams while wiping off their sweat. Lucas was the first to complete the test. In the surprised eyes of everyone, he handed his parchment into the hands of Professor McGonagall. Oh, very beautiful words, very wonderful answer. Professor McGonagall carefully glanced at the answer on the parchment, showing a rather satisfied expression. Looking forward to your next practical performance, Mr. Grindelwald. The written test is over. The little wizards fled from the stuffy classroom one after another. Feel the cool wind outside. One by one seemed to be reborn. Soon, the practical exam begins. The first subject is transfiguration. Professor McGonagall stood on the podium and looked at the crowd and said, the content of this practical assessment is to turn mice into snuff bottles. The more refined you become, the higher your score will be, and vice versa. Professor McGonagall waved his wand. Transfer dozens of mice from their cages to the little wizard. Getting the mouse, Lucas didn't cast the transfiguration spell right away. Turning rats into dead objects is very simple for him. But to become beautiful, you need to think carefully. On the podium, Professor McGonagall nodded when he saw Lucas's performance. This is an exam, not a class, and there are no college points. It doesn't help that the transformation is done first. Just then, Professor McGonagall saw Lucas pull out his wand. Accompanied by a crystal light flashed. A snuff bottle with exquisite shape and bright colors appeared in front of Lucas. There is a layer of crystal on the outside of the snuff bottle, and the crystal is a beautiful ink painting of mountains and rivers. The plants and trees in the painting are vivid, as if they are the real existence in the pot. Oh, very beautiful oriental snuff bottle. 
Mr. Grindelwald, I think your test result this time should be O. Thank you, Professor. The conversation between the two attracted the attention of others. Looking at the snuff bottle on Lucas's desk, Ron waved his wand jealously. The mouse in front of him immediately turned into a kettle. But the mouth of the pot is the mouse's head. Hear the screams of mice. Professor McGonagall looked at Ron and shook his head. Professor McGonagall, please give me another chance, this was an accident. Obviously, Ron's reckless behavior brought him very bad grades. The transfiguration exam is over. Everyone came to the examination site of the charms class again. Professor Flitwick had long been standing on a thick stack of books waiting. Very good, have you seen the pineapple in front of you? Seeing everyone nodding, he continued, isn't it very simple to let this pineapple tap dance across the desk? He had just finished speaking when he heard a tapping sound. Lucas waved his wand and directed the pineapple in front of him to dance gracefully. For good looks, he even gave pineapple a hairstyle. The skirts needed for tap dancing are made from the peel of pineapple. Tap tap tap, pineapple is like a real tap dancer. Walking past the desk with a swaying skirt. Oh ho, great show, Lucas you never disappoint, oh, your grade is oh. Professor Flitwick screamed and announced Lucas's grades. This made the little wizards in the examination room envious. The magic spell practical test is over. It's lunch time. Hermione walked out of the transfiguration class examination room, saw Lucas standing at the door and went up to complain immediately. I thought it was so scary, it turned out to be so simple, the seniors are really funny, but this kind of exam is really interesting. As a top student, what will you do after the exam? Of course it is the answer. Hermione asked Lucas for a long time, then said angrily. Maylin, I got a question wrong in the written test, so it seems that I won't be able to get a full score. Perhaps you are right and I am wrong. Don't comfort me, I can tell right from wrong, oh, it's terrible. Looking at the little witch's expression, Lucas really wanted to persuade her not to put too much pressure on herself. But after thinking about it, he didn't seem qualified to say this. Now it seems that the one who puts the most pressure on Hermione is himself. The two had lunch, immediately usher in the afternoon exam. Forgetting the potion, after using it can make people forget everything. There is no antidote yet, and we can only wait for the effect of the medicine to end. N. This is your exam today, Professor Snape whispered. See everyone looking at themselves. Professor Snape frowned uncommonly. Watch what I do. Think I'm going to write down the steps, and tell you. Move your heads full of Agnatherum splendens and think about it, this is an exam, doctors and ladies. The little wizards hurriedly put the cauldron on the fire. Use your brain to try to recall the process of making the forgetting potion. A potion of oblivion is not too difficult to make. After all, Lucas and the others are only in first grade. The potion mainly uses three kinds of materials, namely, Wangchuan river water, parasitic berries and valerian. Lucas put the materials into the crucible one by one according to the steps. Look at his calm movements. There was a hint of satisfaction in Professor Snape's eyes. Although he still has doubts about Lucas. But after a semester passed, the other party seemed to be flat and did not make any dangerous moves. The most dangerous time was setting a fire in the Forbidden Forest. Yes, Mr. Grindelwald. With a faint compliment, Professor Snape walked towards Della. As the son of a friend, Della has known Professor Snape since he was a child, and received his potion training before entering school. After watching the two people who made me most satisfied, Snape's eyes turned to our savior classmate. Mr. Potter, if you were in class at this moment, I would definitely deduct some points from you severely. I don't know if it is an illusion. Lucas seemed to hear the feeling of hatred in Professor Snape's tone. Everything seemed to be going well with the potions test today. Until the end of the exam, there were no accidents in the classroom. Bang. Lucas never realized that he still had the potential of the crow's mouth. Idiot. Idiot. Get out of my classroom immediately. Professor Snape's roar echoed in everyone's ears. Watching Neville and Seamus run out in desperation. Lucas seemed to understand Professor Snape's mood somewhat. Whoever comes across this kind of student who has been teaching for a semester and keeps making mistakes. I'm afraid I will be angry too. 
Professor Snape didn't suffer from brain congestion due to anger, thanks to the miracle of magic. Lee Nuo how the potion test is over. That's just Cuthbert Bin's history of magic and Professor Hooch's flying exam. For the history of magic exam, you only need to answer Cuthbert Bin's questions. It's like some exams in the muggle world. It only takes rote memorization to pass. As for the flying lesson, it is even simpler, just ride a broom and fly a few laps according to the prescribed movements. The vigorous final exam is over. The little wizards ushered in a week of happy life. The results will be announced a week later. Lucas is very confident about his test results. Next, we can consider the philosopher's stone and Voldemort. Dinner time. Lucas sat at the long Slytherin table, staring at Harry's back. He was thinking that this trip to the playground would be without Hermione's help. How should Harry pass those checkpoints? At this time the village. The hooting of an owl came from afar. An owl flew unsteadily towards the Gryffindor table. See the red envelope in its mouth. The restaurant immediately became silent. Whoa. Ron Weasley got a howler letter. Accompanied by Seamus Finnegan's shout. The restaurant immediately became lively. Ron Weasley, what you have done is a disgrace to me and your father. If Percy hadn't written me a letter, how long would you have kept it a secret? You actually contacted your big brother privately and sent a dragon over there. Aren't you afraid of causing trouble to your big brother Charlie? Ron Weasley, you'd better explain it to me when you come back this time. Also, when did your father and I teach you to slander your classmates? Black Wizard. Merlin's beard, how can you say such vicious words? If there is a next time, I will definitely ask Headmaster Dumbledore to expel you, idiot. Molly Weasley's grumpy voice came from the roaring letter. Ron looked angrily at Percy Weasley who was sitting not far away. Unexpectedly, a traitor appeared among their brothers. The roaring letter turned into a cloud of ashes after conveying the contents of the letter. After a short silence, loud laughter erupted in the restaurant. For a little wizard, it is very embarrassing to receive a yelling letter from a parent. Della looked at Ron's blushing cheeks, with tears in his eyes. The Weasley twins came to Ron, one on the left and one on the right. Pick him up and gesture around. On behalf of Ronnie, thank you all. I would like to introduce our little brother, Ronnie Jr. Get out. Ron broke free from the two and yelled at them. This drew ridicule from other people in the restaurant. In fact, the last few weeks have not been easy for Ron and Harry. The reason is that the two deducted too many points from Gryffindor. Even the little lions have some complaints in their hearts. Not surprisingly, this year Gryffindor will have the fewest points of the four houses. The professors who were eating looked at the lively restaurant. There was a happy smile on his face. It's just that they didn't know that they were infected by the little wizard's emotions. Still because of Molly Weasley's howling letter. Next week, Hogwarts students are having fun every day. No classes, no homework. 370. Three or five friends get together. This is their ideal college life. Unfortunately, such days are too short. Wait until the results are announced. Many little wizards will never have such a good summer vacation as they do now. The eighth floor of the castle. Lucas comes out of the room of requirement again. Looking at the door slowly disappearing behind him. His expression became a little helpless. For a week, he searched through a third of the room for tatters. But Ravenclaw's crown was not found. Looks like there's no hope of finding it this semester. Results will be announced today. And tomorrow night Dumbledore will announce the House Cup. The day after tomorrow Hogwarts will enter the long summer vacation. Lucas tapped the wizard's robe a few times with his wand. Dusty robes become as good as new. The results are out, we are happy. I can't watch it, if I get a deep bad, I'll be over for the summer. It's okay, be brave, you're a Gryffindor. Two girls walked past Lucas. After hearing what the two said, Lucas learned that the results had been announced. Come to the front of the teaching area. A huge piece of parchment is being posted on the bulletin board. This parchment records everyone's achievements. Being enchanted, little wizards just need to write their names with their wands. The parchment immediately takes on its own merits. Certainly, if you are not very confident about your grades, you can choose to check when there are few people or look for it yourself among hundreds of names. Oh, look who this is. It's Master Lucas who disappeared for a week, I thought you wouldn't come. 
hear voices behind him. Lucas smiled slightly, turned around and hugged the other dong in his arms. Sorry honey, I've been really busy this week. Hermione struggled slightly, but she gave up when she couldn't break free. But seeing the eyes projected from time to time around. And the envious eyes of friends around you. The little witch is both shy and proud. Really, this happens every time. What are you looking for in the room of requirement? A very useful alchemy item, I haven't found it yet, I will let you know when I find it. See Lucas' mysterious look. Hermione hummed softly and walked to the bulletin board. As she writes her name. Hermione Granger's results soon appeared in front of everyone. Oh, see Hermione's all O's except for the written test. There were exclamations all around immediately. The little witch turned to look at her boyfriend with a slightly smug expression. Miss Granger is amazing. Of course, seeing her own results, Hermione could finally breathe a sigh of relief. At least, she proved to everyone that she is qualified to stand beside Lucas. Hermione, who was completely relaxed, immediately pulled Lucas and his friend Chu Zhang back to the bulletin board. Let me see your results. As an invisible top student, Chu Zhang certainly has good grades. Then the eyes of the two women turned to Lucas. All right. Lucas reluctantly pulled out his wand. Soon, his grades appeared on the parchment. I don't know which professor's prank. When his results appeared, many ribbons suddenly floated down from the bulletin board. Moreover, Lucas's results were enlarged to the entire bulletin board. Look at the golden, one, in front of his name. Everyone understands that this represents the glory of the first place in the whole grade. When you see that every subject under the name is O. Many people couldn't help but exclaim. Harry et al. were also in the crowd. Lucas is really good. He knows a lot and studies well. No wonder the professors and classmates like him. Seeing Lucas's achievements, Harry was very envious. Oh, come on Harry, he reminds me of Percy, that nerd, he shouldn't be in Gryffindor. Ron complained dissatisfied. He hated two people the most in his life. One is Delico Malfoy. The other is his big brother Percy Weasley. Now it looks like there will be one more, Lucas Grindelwald. See Lucas receiving compliments from the crowd. Ron felt even more uncomfortable. The Weasley twins, who had been lurking aside for a long time, smiled at each other. The two separated from the crowd. Wrote, Ron Weasley, on the bulletin board. What are you doing? Stop. When Ron found out, it was too late to stop it. Ferris and George didn't even think it was obvious enough. They worked their magic to amplify Ron's name even further. Look at his poor grades. The twins said with a pitiful look, poor Ronnie. Mom knows your grades, and I'm afraid she will nag you for the whole summer vacation. It even wakes you up every morning so you can review your homework. Oh Merlin, how pathetic. Ron looked at his grades of 2Ds terrible and AT troll. I was so ashamed that I wanted to find a crack in the ground and get in. Why is my history of magic grade T troll? How in the world can anyone answer Cuthbert Bin's questions? Harry heard his friends' complaints and didn't know how to explain them. In fact, his grades were not very satisfactory. Before the exam, he is all immersed in the decryption game. But he's better than Ron, at least no one cares about his grades. Congratulations on the new achievement, the first, only, grade reward, 200 achievement points. Lucas was relieved by the belated system prompt. As long as you get the Academy Cup tomorrow night, he will be able to get a chance to draw diamonds. Two beautiful ladies, would you like to follow me to the restaurant to see what delicious food is available? Hermione and Cho Zhang looked at each other and smiled. Of course, handsome sir. The three top students left the bulletin board with smiles on their faces. A group of young wizards were left thinking hard about how to explain their unsatisfactory grades to their parents. The three of Harry also left the bulletin board. Because Harry suddenly discovered something very suspicious. How did Hagrid's dragon eggs come about? He thought it necessary to chat with Hagrid. Of course Della has no objection. He is in a very good mood at the moment. Although the results are not as good as Lucas and Hermione. But not too bad. It is also among the best among Slytherins. As a qualified Slytherin. Of course, Della couldn't let go of such a good opportunity. So all the way he said some weird things to Ron. Ron was so angry that he wanted to punch him. The three of them came to Hagrid in such a noisy way. 
Hagrid somehow found a clarinet. At this time, he was sitting in front of the house and playing Scottish tunes. A few simple words of dialogue. Hagrid told the story of how he got the dragon egg. I drank a lot of wine with that man. Later, the man said that he had a dragon egg in his hand. If I wanted it, I would play cards and gamble, but he had to find out whether I had the ability to raise dragons. Hey, who am I? So I told him that I can even treat Lu Wei submissively, that man seems to be very interested in the three-headed dog. But I think he should be like this. After all, three-headed dogs are too rare, so I told him that Lu Wei is actually easy to deal with. He likes to listen to music. As long as there is some beautiful music, he will fall asleep. The three of Harry's eyes widened in surprise. By the time Hagrid found out that he had slipped the tongue, he had already run back to the castle. We need to find Headmaster Dumbledore immediately. The three came to Professor McGonagall and expressed their demands out of breath. I'm very sorry to the three gentlemen. Professor Dumbledore is not at school now. He has received a letter from the Ministry of Magic and has now left for London. Merlin, what should I do? After being reprimanded by Professor McGonagall, the trio walked out of the classroom dejectedly. Unfortunately, I met Professor Snape passing by at the door. Looking at each other's gloomy face, Harry immediately decided to go to protect the Philosopher's Stone tonight. Harry, I think what Professor McGonagall said is right, if we continue to act nonsense, we might actually be expelled. Ron didn't seem to want to go. But Harry made up his mind, don't you understand? If Snape got the Philosopher's Stone, he might use it to start a school of the dark arts or give the Philosopher's Stone to Voldemort. At that time, we can only wait to die, so we must stop him. Looking at Harry with firm eyes, Della always felt that something was wrong. So he decided to go back and ask Lucas later. It was agreed to meet on the moving stairs at 10 o'clock in the evening, and Delic hurried to the ancient Slytherin. Evening. Delico frowned and came to the sofa in the common room. Lucas, I want to talk to you. Close the book in your hand. Lucas looked at the platinum boy beside him. What's wrong? Harry thinks that Dean Snape is going to go grab the Sorcerer's Stone tonight, do you think it's possible? Lucas didn't answer, but asked rhetorically. What do you think? Is Dean Snape that kind of person? No. Della Kay shook her head in affirmation. See Lucas' surprised eyes. Della laughed and said, I have known the Dean since I was a child, and I know that he is not a villain. During this time, I have been following Harry around to investigate, in fact, to prove that Dean Snape is not the villain he said. Lucas chuckled. This is the Della family he knows. It seems that I misunderstood this guy before. Lucas carefully looked at the platinum boy in front of him. Compared with the first meeting, Della has indeed grown a lot. Della K, I'm glad you think so, and I'll give you a tip. If you come across a puzzle or a difficult choice, choose the smallest, most inconspicuous one. If you want to back off, remember to choose something round. Inexplicable words. Successfully made Delico's eyes become confused. What's the meaning? You'll know when the time comes, you just need to keep it in your mind. Della Branch nodded, and immediately reacted. Lucas, won't you come with us? He had just finished speaking when he saw Lucas shaking his head at himself. I won't go, I wish you a happy time. Looking at his best friend who got up and left. Della always felt that the other party was very strange today. It's like knowing what's going to happen to them next. Strange. Della walked aside muttering. It was close to 10 o'clock in the evening. Della co tidied up his wizard robes and left the Slytherin lounge. Mr. Barrow. Lucas's voice suddenly came from the empty lounge. His figure appeared on a nearby chair, still holding fantastic beasts and where to find them. Bloody Baron, the resident ghost of Slytherin. It has a thin appearance and a gloomy complexion, which fits the characteristics of a Slytherin very well. Bloody Barrow held a western sword in his hand, and his clothes were covered with silver blood. What can you do, Mr. Grindelwald? Bloody Baron was very polite. Because it can feel the deadly threat emanating from Lucas. Barrow himself was also wondering. It has been dead for many years, what else can make itself feel threatened? Mr. Barrow, please follow Della to have a look. If they encounter trouble, please help to solve it. No problem, happy to help you. The bloody baron flew out after speaking. Wait until the other party leaves. Lucas put away the book and followed out of the common room. 
Due to the deal with Dumbledore, nor was he afraid of being seen going out by the portraits. He even wished that the portraits would go and report to Dumbledore. To let the other party know that he is serious about fulfilling the contract. Bloody Barrow followed Delic from afar. Until he joined Harry and the three of them. That's right, three people. Seamus Finnegan, the little prince of blasting, also followed. Why is he here? To this Gryffindor student who always creates surprises. Della Branch is certainly no stranger. Harry said embarrassingly, we met him and Neville when we came out. Neville wanted to sue, so I knocked him unconscious. Simo has to follow after seeing this, or report to the professor. Merlin, did he think we were going out to play? Hear Della's dissatisfied voice. Ron immediately stood up and complained for his classmate and roommate. The quiet quarrel of several people attracted Peeves. As a mischievous ghost, Peeves is very different from the other ghosts in the castle. The most obvious is that it is not milky and transparent. Its sole body has bright colors. Oh, there are a few wizard kid heads who don't sleep in the middle of the night, and Peeves caught them. I'll tell Filch immediately, ha ha ha. Oh Merlin, it's actually Peeves. Harry looked into the air with a headache. Peeves likes to play pranks, and he likes to watch the chase game between Filch and the wizard head. The faces of the members of the Della family also changed. Just when they were about to run away quickly. Suddenly there was a low voice in the distance. Peeves. Peeves stiffened. He looked into the depths of the corridor in fear. Peeves, who is not afraid of heaven and earth, is afraid of Baron, the bloody man of Slytherin. Oh, Lord Bloodman, Master Barrow, please forgive Peeves for his little joke. I really didn't know that you invited these people, I'm sorry to disturb you. Bloody Baron understood what trouble Lucas was referring to. While admiring Lucas, it looked at Peeves and said, we are going to do something very important. Oh, little Peeves will not bother you, my lord. After Peeves finished speaking, he disappeared before everyone's eyes. Harry and the others looked at the bloody Baron who was approaching. Just when I was about to thank you, I saw the other party flying into the distance. Huh, we're saved, let's go quickly. The four of them huddled under Harry's invisibility cloak and walked towards the fourth floor. After a while, Lucas came from afar. Looking at the eight feet crowded together in front of him, he sighed helplessly. At this time, Peeves went and came back. Seeing Lucas, its eyes lit up. I just wanted to tease the little wizard head in front of me. I saw the purple flame ignited in the opponent's eyes. A throbbing from the depths of the soul reminded Peeves. If you stay any longer, you may die. Good night, little Mr. Grindelwald. Don't worry, little Peeves has seen nothing, and will not say anything. After Peeves finished speaking, he turned to face the wall and covered his eyes. Comma 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 comma. Lucas made his way to the fourth floor corridor. Heard the conversation of Harry and others coming from the room. He immediately cast a disillusionment spell on himself. Four people who were busy lifting the dog's paw. Didn't notice that, the door behind him suddenly opened and closed quickly. Ron, be careful not to wake up the three-headed dog. Look at the clumsy Ron Weasley. Della Branch couldn't help complaining. The two who were already enemies immediately started bickering. Lucas clearly saw Harry let out a long sigh. Probably he also had a headache. Lucas looked at the harp that had stopped beside him. I don't know if I should remind the people who are making noise. Do you feel that something is missing? After Harry finished speaking, the two people in the picture fell silent immediately. Harp, the harp has stopped. Seamus Finnegan reminded. The remaining three looked at the three-headed dog aside in horror. I saw three heads and six eyes staring straight at them. Jump. Harry opened the trapdoor and jumped in first. Others are not slow. Jumped into the playground before the three-headed dog bit it off. Liu Wei roared loudly into the trapdoor. Immediately afterwards, it suddenly raised its head to look at where Lucas was hiding. Sniff. Notice the change in Liu Wei's eyes. Lucas pulled out his wand and swung a swoon. This dog has a good nose. While the other party has not yet woken up, Lucas bewitches the harp. The melodious music sounded again, and Liu Wei gradually fell asleep. Wait for him to come over the trapdoor. See the four people entangled in the devil's net. Lucas sighed. He felt like a nanny. Such a simple devil's net can't solve it. Did all four of them feed the dogs? Complaints belong to complaining. Still, 
he raised his wand to help. At this moment, Seamus Finnegan's voice came from below. Luminescence. Boom. As expected of the little prince of blasting. A simple lighting spell can actually produce a violent explosion. Thanks to the flames produced by the explosion. The devil's net loosened several people, allowing them to enter the next level. Lucas also took the opportunity to jump from above. Harry, what's the matter? Harry looked behind him, he seemed to hear a very slight sound behind him just now, as if someone had fallen from a height. It's nothing, I probably heard it wrong. After Harry finished speaking, he led several people down the wet wall. The way down was dark and quiet. Several people could even hear their own breathing clearly. From time to time, water drops fell on the wet walls to the ground. Every time a sound is made, it makes several people feel uneasy. Listen, what is the sound? Delico was the first to hear the sound of wings flapping in the distance. He quickened his pace. After turning a corner, you come to a room. Birds were flying around in the room, and opposite them was a locked door. Walk. Harry took the lead, and several people rushed to the door quickly. Strangely, the birds in the sky didn't seem to be planning to attack them. Alahu hole open. Della Branch's wand flashed, but the big lock of the wooden door did not open. Harry turned to look at the flying birds. I know what they are now, they are not birds, they are keys with wings. Look, here's a broomstick. Three old brooms are standing quietly in the corner. Harry and Della looked at each other. As seeker and prospective seeker for both academies. It is not difficult to find a key in this small room. The two road brooms and soon spotted the target. Lucas yawned aside. This is really a playground for children. How can an adult wizard need to be so troublesome, all the way through with magic power? Taking advantage of a few people opening the door. Lucas slipped in first. The remaining human flesh wizard chest shouldn't be a problem. Don't worry. According to the original book, there is no need to worry about the next troll. The potion level has a hint from him to Della, so he should be able to pass it easily. Lucas let out a long breath. The time to play games with the kids is finally over. But when he walked to the wooden door leading to the next level, a roar of a giant monster came from behind the door. Dumbledore, you sweet old bee, I can't get enough of you. Taking advantage of Harry and the others not paying attention, he came to the next floor. Look at the giant monster that is half bigger than the Halloween one. Lucas's face became quite ugly. Thanks for watching, please like and subscribe my channel.